Everybody, happy Friday! Sexy, wild thing, freaking care of clothes. I'm Malicious Intent. Hi, Princess Megan Elsa. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Serendipity. Woohoo! Friday night with tea. Well, it's still technically afternoon for me, but you know, it is what it is. I'm Mary Jane. Cause I'm a live with Mary Jane. Hey, Alyssa. Hi, in the bushes. What's up, BG? Hi, Steph, the Army Vet. Ginger Snaps. Hey, Shane. Welcome back. Hey, Maggie. I mean, I feel like there's a cancer going to start next time to feed. Hi, Todd. <laughs> I like being with a bunch of women. I learned, yeah, you, you learned in life to suck up to women because it makes life a lot easier. I see what you've learned there, Todd. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Music City Mom. Hi, my sharky soul sister. K Braze. Voices. You know I love ya. You know I love ya. Hi, Judy. Hi, Lynn. Happy Friday. Hi, Connie. Oh, look at that. Hey, terrific tea, marvelous mods, and the charming chat. Charming now reminds me of like Sons of Anarchy. And that's what I've been binge watching lately. I never watched it before. I know. Don't give me hell. I just had it. Friday Night Live with tea. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I apologize. I was not able to come on yesterday. Um, I knew that my plan for the next live was to review a lot of documents. I woke up yesterday with kind of a, a sore throat um, and took the kids to school. I actually ended up coming back home and I laid down for like three hours which is, was nice. Don't get me wrong, but I just wasn't, I, I just was like, I, there's no way I can sit on a live and, and read to you guys any form of documents or to talk in a way that I felt would be um, engaging for you guys at all. Cause I was like, um, I do feel better today. I took some day cool yesterday. I took some night cool last night. Um, oh, you did. I got to have a picture of Dexter in a criminality shirt. That's so awesome. See, and I never watched Sopranos ATS. Hi, ATS, by the way. I never watched the Sopranos. I know. That's why some people are going to be like, what? What are you talking about? Um, so I get like a weird, I get like a weird cold. It's like, I can't even call it a cold. But when our weather changes like super drastically, like goes from cold to hot or hot to cold, it's almost like a weird allergies, but it's not actually like allergies. I don't know how to explain it. It's just like every time there's a drastic weather change, I feel like shit. Um, and it did. It went up to, we were, you know, living life in the seventies, you know, nice. And then all of a sudden it's like, nope, we're going to the mid nineties. Enjoy y'all. Hey, rescue all the dogs. Yo, see yours went opposite. Mine went from low to freaking high. I have to watch Sopranos. Okay. Well, after this, we're watching um, the Mayans, the Mayan one, the spinoff of this. I don't, know, I don't know if that's any good, but that's what we're watching, I think, next. 
Yeah, it's just like a weird, I don't know what it is. It's just how every time. I got to see Dexter in a criminality shirt. That's going to be awesome. If you guys aren't in the Facebook group, um, Tia from Decipher Podcast ordered one of the tie-dye hats. And it's so freaking amazing. I'm in love with it. Maybe just because it was on her head, but it looked really good. All right, hold on. Let me turn the turn my phone off. So otherwise, the notifications will just keep going. Yeah, I'd rather be. I'd rather just stay consistent. Whether it's cold, whether it's hot, I don't care. Just leave me some consistency so that I can just feel normal. Like when I have to put like sweatshirt and tennis shoes and socks on in the morning, but by the afternoon I have to like have a tank top and sandals. Like I'm like, come on, get your shit together. <laughs> Yes, that was Tia. Wasn't me. Even though they're both T. Okay, so once again, like I said, um, I do apologize I wasn't able to go live yesterday. I just like there's just no way. And I'm like, I'll just we'll we'll hit it up on Friday. So um the problem with that though is that I spent a lot of time in the office pulling up a lot of stuff. And if you guys know anything about me, I have three monitors and I pulled up a lot of stuff. So I have stuff everywhere. So we're going to do what we can to make it through. Hi, Ainsley. Hi, Gregory. Good to see you. Hi, Jay Everett. Blah, 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 Jay Everett. I can talk him like lately. 103. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Yuck. Um, so what was the hell was I even saying? Just this once. Just this once. So yeah, so I have a whole bunch of stuff every, I have a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. Um, but, and the, I want, what I wanted to do with this live was to go over some of the older Ron Logan stuff. And I know that there are probably people who are either in this chat now or will eventually be in here when we're live that are um, very focused on the fact that they believe that Ron Logan um, was BG. So I'd be positive and Candice and Ember Riot. So I want to go through that. But what the other things that I was doing is a couple other things that I found that I think are really important to touch on before we get to the Ron Logan stuff. So um, that's going to be special for you guys who showed up because it's not like in the title or anything. So they don't actually nobody in the whole world knows it's going to happen until um, you're actually in here. Hey, Nancy. So first and foremost, remember, we were talking about in the last press conference on the last live because we went through all the press conferences. Um, and there was a few of you guys in chat who sent me some really good stuff via email. I haven't got to go through all of it yet, but I appreciate you guys sending it. And I am going to go through it and I'm going to respond to you guys. But um, we were talking at the, at the last press conference that the prosecutor had come out. Um, Nicholas Mc, McClelland had come out and was kind of saying like he wanted to make sure that he kept like the warrants um and the probable cause affidavit, everything sealed. He didn't want the public to see any of that. Um, and I recalled, and I could not remember where he had stated, I thought it was in the press conference, but after watching it, it wasn't. Um, and I'm going to pull this up before I just keep going. Um, okay, wrong one, wrong one. I'm going to find it. Here it is. So in the hearing, it was the hearing that they had with the judge um, on where he was fighting to keep it sealed. And I knew I knew it from somewhere. So I just want to make sure we touch on that because it's very important to what we've been talking about. So this is um, the accused killer. Accused Delphi killer is not the only actor involved in this, says the prosecutor. And we knew that he had said, I just couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was. So it was actually in the hearing. So the man accused of killing two Indiana teen girls may not have acted alone, according to the prosecutor involved in the case. Richard Allen, who's 50, faces two counts of murder in connection to the deaths of 14-year-old Liberty Libby, Libby German. Okay, see, I still can't talk today. And her best friend, 13-year-old Abigail Abby Williams in Delphi, Indiana, on February 13th, 2017. The girls were reported missing by family after failing to return home from a hike on a local trail. Their bodies were discovered the following day, February 14th, near a creek, according to authorities. And during this hearing, Nick McClelland, who we all saw in the in the press conferences, who's also related, 
I'll have to go through that. We'll have to go through a whole family tree because I do have a family tree on this case too from back in the day because I couldn't keep track of who was related to who. It was kind of like um, like a family wreath instead of a family tree kind of thing because there's a lot of adoptions and a lot of couple marriages and then some stepkids over here and then there's guardianship changes and um, so I couldn't keep track of that so I had to make myself a family tree. But Nicholas McClellan, we believe that Richard Allen is not the only actor involved in this. This is what he says, and he wants to keep the documents sealed. Hi, Miss Kay. I'm so grateful for these deep dives. I followed the media reports, but I'm not too familiar with the side stories and sleuth findings. Oh, girl, we, if we go through all of them, we, we would probably just we, we would just be a Delphi channel, I think, because there's so many. Uh, I'm trying to just hit the, the major the major key points um, that we know of. Yes, other actors, Ainsley. Yes, there are other actors. We believe Richard Allen is not the only actor involved in this. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, I know you're very welcome. That's what I was saying. Hi, Nancy. Um, but, yeah, I, it, it, I definitely can't go down every rabbit hole that's happened in the six and a half years, but I'm trying to hit some of the key points and at least – show you guys um, another one that I think is going to be really important that we take a look at is Robert Ives. So you guys keep that name in. And if you guys are doing any research on your own, um, he was the prosecutor um, at the time the murders happened. And he actually stepped down, I think, end of that year, end of 2017, if I remember correctly. But he had a lot to say about it, about the crime scene itself and about the case and the investigation. So I think that going through some of the things that he said are important. We can do, I don't know if I can do it today. We can do like a little mini, um, like all the other like social media suspects. We could do like a little mini version of that just so you guys kind of know, but they're not really, in my opinion, as important. I'm just trying to stick with the ones that, um, like, there's still there's channels out there on YouTube currently to this day creating videos on Ron Logan and and there's websites and blogs and it's uh so I mean Ron Logan's like a, a major key player not to mention the fact that they obviously found the girls on his property so um yeah definition of actor actors a participant in an action or a process he worded it perfectly. Well, he worded it perfectly for then, but not for not for the prosecutor himself now, because now he's like, ah, oh, shit, I got to eat my words. What they'll end up doing is they'll just say, and one of the things we're going to look at today, too, is is like the Ron Logan search warrant. They're just going to simply go, well, look, we, we followed these different investigation paths and they they were dead ends. So we stopped looking at them. Todd, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Violet. Hi, LFT. Hi, Tactical Dragonfly. Point to Lava. Um, so, like I said, so Ron Logan has passed away. Thank you, Teresa, for, for bringing that up, too. He has passed away. The only information you can really find on it says that he passed away from um, during the pandemic. So, I mean, you guys take that for what you want. I don't know exactly what. I mean, he was 77 when the murders happened. So, hi, Quinny. There was a lot of interest. Ron Logan is a very interesting, interesting person of interest. There are things that are in that, in his story that do not add up, do not make sense, and would make somebody go, hey, what the hell? This guy doesn't, you know, things aren't sounding right. Um, so, I mean, he's somebody who should be looked at. But I think it's interesting to know that when Richard Allen was arrested, they were adamant that, like, hey, we want to keep everything sealed. And what we want to keep sealed is because we think that there's other people involved. Now, when we get to the Richard Allen part, which we're not doing today, but we're going to go through all the Richard Allen documents, too. You're going to see that those documents even being unsealed don't they don't name anybody else. So Jackie. Yeah. Logan didn't meet a camera. He didn't like, 
He was a he was a talkative guy. He for sure was a talkative guy. Eating egg rolls but listening. Oh, egg rolls sound good. There are. He actually did talk to a couple of people. Um, I did not pull all that. I didn't. No, well, I did pull some up. I shouldn't say I didn't pull all that. I I pulled up some of his um, major the major interviews, and I know he did talk with um, Barbara McDonald. Um, Steph, yeah, but he's pretty agile. So you got to kind of, you, you can't let that one get you. He's, I mean, for, for an old man, he's able to get around. Hey, Mrs. M. Yeah, he's, he's able to get around. So I don't want you guys to get too lost in his age because you'll see him, you'll see him during the interviews and he has no problem getting around his property. And he's been a very, I mean, he was an active man who owned a lot of land. He lived there for a long time and he was, he, he took care of um, a lot of like large animals. Like he had a lot of horses and he wasn't, yeah, he, he was still, he was still pretty, he was still pretty good. Uh, I will put them in the comments below. Okay. Hey, Tom, Tom, did he, did he lie simply because he was on probation or was he more involved and knew of the happenings? Yeah, we're going to get to that too. Yep. Hey, Natasha. Hey, Birdie's crab chat. To be fair, if there were multiple people, it wouldn't matter if he was 77. True. Right, Shane. Yeah, he definitely was his own worst enemy. He, he, yeah, very true. Okay, so before we get to that, I wanted to touch on on the McLeland statement because we had kind of touched on it the last one. But the other big thing that through this little mini Delphi series, I am getting so many comments on the girls' clothes. And there seems to be a lot of confusion on who was wearing what, what happened, where the clothes were found. And then like, there's even been like some back and forth in the comment sections on the lives about like who's right and who's wrong. So what I did was go through and I tried to like write out all the items so that we can take a look at them. And if you guys know something, I don't let me know. Cause you know, that's what we're here to do. So I wrote them all out. Let me bring that over for you guys so that we can talk about all the different pieces. So when they were reported missing, it was said that Libby was described as standing five foot, four inches tall with a heavy build. She was blonde, had shoulder, shoulder length, blonde. Uh, she has blonde shoulder length hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing a tie dyed shirt with fringe at the bottom, gray sweatpants with unknown black lettering and black Nike shoes. Abby is described as standing four foot tall with a small build, medium length blonde hair and hazel eyes. She was last seen wearing a gray zip up sweatshirt with a burgundy t-shirt underneath and blue jeans. So yes, supposedly according to, Kel yeah, well, and according to the news outlets, cause that's where I pulled this from was, the, oh, you guys can, that's so tiny on your end. Why does that look so tiny? Is that better? There we go. It didn't look that tiny on my side. Yeah, so this was from the news, the news outlet, from the original when she went missing. And so here's what I did. So I went back through all the all the documents that I, you know, had already up and was going through regardless. So we could figure out the clothing situation. So that we know that Libby was nude. Abby was wearing two bras, a black traditional bra and a gray sports bra. No, five foot, four inches, five foot, four inches serendipity. Did I say it wrong? Um, a pink shirt, which is typically, which is technically the bird, it's burgundy, but they refer to it as pink. So it's a burgundy. I should just, let me do, I'll just add that. If I could spell, I wish I can't. burgundy pink shirt um she was wearing libby's sweatshirt which i could not find and this is one of the why, why i put a question mark is and was libby's sweatshirt a pullover like a like a pullover hoodie kelsey says that she that the girls were told to take a sweatshirt 
that Libby had one in her car, in Kelsey's car. So she just took the one that was in Kelsey's car and that Kelsey grabbed one for Abby, which is the zip up hoodie we see in the picture, right? Right, Mary. So that's kind of what we're, yeah, this is, I think, part of where this whole everybody being confused on what there is, like who was wearing what. Uh, the police scanner on day of their murder said Libby was in sweatpants and last place seen was the bridge. Yeah, so this is interesting because I think that the defense, the defense writes in their memorandum about Abby being in Libby's jeans, and they don't just write it once. They write it a lot. So it would be very weird for them to not know the difference of the size of the pants or the fact that she was in she was in a sweat in sweatpants. Shmita, did you give memberships? I didn't even see you pop in here. Hi, K Bird. Shmida, you're so sweet. Thank you. So I find it hard that that's like a, that that's a typo because there is, I mean, there is a lot of typos in there. We've gone through the document. We know there's a lot of typos in there. But that's all. I mean, it would be very, very weird. And like the whole thing is like saying that Abby is dressed in Libby's clothes. Now, let's think about this too. The way that it's described, and we can go through it about this sweatshirt, because the way they describe in their section of, you know, how this person would have had to have done all this themselves section, they describe it like the the person would have had to have taken the sweatshirt, put an arm in, put another arm in, and put it over the head, and then pulled it down um, to cover the midsection. That makes me think hoodie, right? Like a like a pullover, not a zip up, because you don't need to do anything over the head then. So I'm wondering if you guys interpret it that way as well. And like I said, well, I'll pull it up. So this is, like I said, I wanted to just kind of go through this with you guys so we could see exactly where everything was found. Um, okay, so we got the, she has two bras on. Now, the gray sports bra is on top of the black bra. And the defense keeps saying that they, and apparently, according to the defense, the prosecution is also saying, or the investigators are also saying that they did believe that both girls were completely nude and then had to redress. And I don't know how I feel about that because the black bra was most likely hers and then the gray sports bra goes on over it. Otherwise, it would be very awkward and weird, right, to put on if the black bra is Libby's, it's going to be bigger. And then to put on a tinier sports bra over that would be weird. I don't, I mean, not that it couldn't happen, but just saying. Um, so then she's got the, she's got her, the, her own shirt on. Not Libby's shirt. She doesn't have Libby's shirt on. So I think Libby's sweatshirt would be the hoodie pullover. So it makes me think that that is Libby's sweatshirt. But like I said, we're going to read, read through that. It talks about the fact that there were that he that one person would have had to have taken the right shoe and put it on and taken the left shoe and put it on. Um, and then we know that they say that one of Libby's shoes was found under the body and then under the shoe was the phone. On the dispatch audio that we listened to, we know they say they found a pair of underwear. So in the photo that was given to Gavin Fish, you see the tie-dye shirt, one black Nike shoe, and what is speculated to be a pair of underwear. Now, this to me is the same pair of underwear. Because, and let me see if I can pull this up for you guys real quick. And I'm just putting all the pieces together so that, like I said, we can go through this together. As, you know, we, you guys can tell me what you think too. Let me see if I still have it up. Did I close that one? Probably. Hold on. This is on. Great. So for a very long time, we were told that they did find one of Libby's shoes. Remember, on the south side of the creek. 
And then this is from Grady. Exactly what I was feeling. Um, back in April or August of 2019. So I'm just going to play this part of this, this clip. Um, go back over here. So you can hear her description. Yeah, did you say there was a phone? Yeah, the phone was, according to the defense, the phone was found under a shoe that was under Abby. But according to the search warrant that um, Liggett was partaking in writing, it says that the phone was found under, that Libby's phone was found under Libby. So who knows? Down where I was. On a podcast, but when you heard. So I, me and a couple other people um, crossed the bridge and we had searched underneath the bridge in like the little wooded area that's right underneath it and looked up by the water and um, in some trees and stuff that are down there. We looked at all those. And then as we were going back up to towards the private drive, um, there was a group of people standing in the driveway and another group that was down where I was, but just a little bit more towards the house that's down there. Mm -hmm. um, I see. And when I was standing up there, I knew that we hadn't found anything. And so we were going to go back up and go back towards where the rest of our group was. And then somebody yelled up that they'd found a shoe and asked um, anybody that was around what type of shoes the girls were wearing. Uh, and as soon as I identified the shoe that they had found, um, they actually looked across the creek and saw them. Oh, jeez. Okay, so did you guys hear that? She says they they yelled up to her, asked her what kind of shoes the girls were wearing, and she yelled down to them what shoes Libby was wearing, and they said that they found they had found a shoe. I'm gonna play that part one more time just so you guys can hear it. And then she says, then they, then that's when they found the girls. Um, not that they found the shoe on the girls. That was always a point of contention. And, and it still comes up every once in a while in some of the groups that like she says, they found the shoe and that's how they found the girls. That's not how it, that's not how it went. Down where I was, but just a little bit more towards the house that's down there. Mm -hmm. um, I see. And when I was standing up there, I knew that we hadn't found anything. And so we were going to go back up and go back towards where the rest of our group was. And then somebody yelled up that they'd found a shoe and asked um, anybody that was around what type of shoes the girls were wearing. Uh, and as soon as I identified the shoe that they had found, um, they actually looked across the creek and saw them. Oh, jeez. Um Okay, so does that make sense? Um, JC, that's not what she said the first time. Uh, is, is that a question? I don't, you have a question mark, so I'm not sure because I know that there has been a lot of commentary on that Kelsey's kind of changed some things throughout, but I, have, I did not sit here and listen to every one of Kelsey's interviews, so I'm wondering if that is a statement or if that um, is a question. You tell me. Does anyone... He, he definitely is he's very supportive of law enforcement, which I get and I get, but I wanted to listen to the Kelsey part of this for sure. Because that's the that was the whole thing about the shoe. When she was 13, she, would she wear two bras to make the girls stand a little taller? I don't, I've never worn two. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'd have to ask you guys. I know. I know you are, BR. I know you are. Libby being nude. Hi, Tara. Libby being nude makes me think she was the target source of anger, the one intended to be degraded. Maybe Abby wasn't meant to be there that day or was collateral damage. I The blood on the hands thing is what really gets me. It, I, I don't know why. I just, it brings me to the saying, like, her blood is on your hands kind of thing. It doesn't mean that she didn't, but I mean, these are all things that we're going to have to know. We're going to have to figure out later. Hi, Heather. 
they he, they're at, both the investigators and the defense are stating that my sandal fell off sorry for that um that they believe the girls were com- like basically undressed did you really ainsley girls do teenagers do weird stuff it's true i don't know i don't know and i think that that would be very obvious based on um the sizing of them and what their what their common practice was which we don't know so take that for what you want um hi eras hi punksy so like i said i just wanted you guys to hear that clip so that she's talking about that they found that they found the shoe now so we know that the black nike shoe is libby's so they found the shoe on the south side they also found libby's other shoe underneath abby is where we're at right so both those shoes are are accounted for both of abby's shoes are accounted for i like i said i think that the dispatch finding the underwear and if you remember when we listened to the dispatch they say okay we need some more evidence bags up here and then they go to the secret channel where you can't hear them anymore it would make sense that all those items found together that we looked at in the Gavin fish photo, which I can pull up real quick, just in case any of you guys haven't seen it. He has a few photos and he has them on his website. He also has them um, on video on his channel. He talks about the fact that he did not, he did not um, verify them, but the person did send them all the that did send him all the metadata from these about when they were taken and where they were taken. I don't know. I I never did. I never had an issue with them not looking big. I'm shooting that on that side. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I should pull up. Do I not have the other one saved? Right. Give me a second. I'll pull them up. Because the other one, you can clearly see the shoe. So it makes me think, and if you guys if you guys have a different thought on this, then let me know. Um, they're talking about how they they found like the one shoe, right? So this would be like the other angle of that other photo. So here's one Nike shoe, the tie dye shirt, which would be Libby's shirt, and this was potentially a pair of underwear we don't i don't know that that is for a fact but that's what it was speculated and then if you listen to the dispatch they say they found a pair of the girls underwear so you have the shoe a potential pair of underwear i don't know if that's anything important i can't really tell and because it is so watermarked it makes it even harder but then you have the tie-dye shirt So that brings us back to the list. So I think that the in the photo, which is here, the underwear, the black Nike shoe, and the tie-dye shirt, in my opinion, is the same underwear they're talking about on the dispatch call. In the one of the search warrants, I think it's the search warrant, not the probable cause, but we're going to go through it anyway, so you guys are going to know. But I think it's the search warrant. It talks about that the... Um, that there is a pair of underwear and a sock that are missing. So that's what we have missing. In the memorandum, they do say the clothing from the girls was found in Deer Creek. That to me is more than just a shoe, which more so validates the picture that we were looking at before, right? Hi, Kaleida Hope. Oh, thank you. Our bucket list has holes. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's refreshing my memory. Big chested. I'm a big chested girl, Idaho Charlie, and I've never worn two. 
But I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I, just because I don't doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't. So it says, so they have the footnote that clothing from the girls was found in Deer Creek. Um, so what we don't know is Abby's jeans or slash Libby's sweatpants, which is still, I'm still not sold on this whole thing. I'm not so I don't know I don't really understand the whole sweatpants to the her having the jeans on to then if it's Abby's jeans they account for that though so it's, here's the other thing it can't be a typo because they actually account for that in their memorandum um so once the painting of the rune on the tree was completed using Libby's blood this is in the section of the memorandum that they're going like this one person would have had to have done this by themselves um once the painting of the rune on the tree was completed using Libby's blood, the man acting alone would now locate certain clothing items that he did not place on Abby, but were still on the ground, including Abby's jeans. Once he located these certain clothing items, he would gather them. Once the man acting alone gathered the remaining clothing items, he would leave the immediate area around the crime scene and walk to the river, which we know was about 50 feet away. Once the man acting alone reached the river, he would toss these clothing items onto the river. So they don't actually say like what actual items, but they do refer to Abby's jeans being included in that. Now is jeans the typo and they are just, maybe they should say pants instead of jeans. And they, and possibly this person did put Libby's pants on Abby. And they just, like I said, they just wrote jeans instead. Maybe. Um, so this is it. So the second pair of underwear, I put a question mark because if we have a pair of underwear that's potentially in the water that they're saying on the on the dispatch that they found, and then we have a pair of underwear that it's missing. If is there any underwear on the girls? Then okay, this is a, I, and I don't mean to like. I don't mean to be disrespecting the, these these girls in any which way by talking about this. I'm just trying to account for evidence. So I hope you guys know that. Like I, I just, it's it's hard because they're 13 and 14 year old little girls, and, and we're here talking about their underwear. Like I don't know. That just kind of, I get like that's odd. But I'm really just trying to account for evidence and trying to keep it very, you know, strict. So just know that like, I don't, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful and talking about these girls undergarments. Um, so then that we, where's the second sweatshirt then? So we don't have Abby's zip up, which would technically be Kelsey's zip up sweatshirt. Hi C dub. I don't try and come comments are from where I am. You sound great on two times speed T. Oh, that's good. Okay. Angels light. Thank you. I just, I know it's just, it's so hard because then people are like, how are you discussing like that? And it's like, oh, I'm not, that's, I don't want to do that. That's not what I mean. Hi, Tony. So we, we're missing Kelsey's zip up sweatshirt. And then we're missing three socks, potentially, because Abby's socks could be put on Abby. Abby could still have her socks on. She does have her Converse put back on. So are her socks on her feet? We don't, they're not accounted for in any document that I could figure out. Um, and then if there's one sock missing from the crime scene, according to the search warrant, then where, then even if Abby's are on her, then we're missing one sock. <laughs> yes. Yes, Miss K. Yep. I can pull that up too, just so you guys can see that, just so you guys know, because we don't have that then. We, where's the zip up? sweatshirt so you don't have her jeans and you don't have her zip up sweatshirt and it's like pink they refer to it as pink in some documents and burgundy and other ones so so yeah so there's something off then with the socks so if abby has her two socks on only one sock is missing. Where's the other sock from? So this is kind of, like I said, I just put this together so we could kind of see what, what was, what, what do we even have? The moms talked about this somewhere. Oh, that Libby liked to wear mismatched socks. It wouldn't surprise me. 
I've got a sneaking suspicion that maybe they were lured there under the false pretenses that Abby could spend time visiting her boyfriend, maybe told to meet at RL since his dad was staying there. I've heard rumblings that the um that the boyfriend or boyfriend and what another boy were going to meet them there and asked if they could go and that their dads told them no, that they couldn't go. I've heard that. I don't I want that's once again like six and a half years you hear a lot of stuff. Yeah, maybe that's so maybe that's how they don't know that maybe one of Libby's is missing. They don't even know what it looks like, possibly. I don't know. But these are questions that I still have. So it's where is where are Abby's jeans? Where are where's the other sock? Is there actually underwear missing? Because if they found it in the water, then is it actually even missing? And where is Abby slash Kelsey's sweatshirt? That's where I'm at. So if you guys have watched something or know something or have heard something, let me know. Because I couldn't find those answers in my in my search. Um, before we move on from that, though, let me go back and go through real quick the the part where it talks about the sweatshirt. And you guys tell me what you think. If you think that, to me, it sounded like this, like a like a like a pullover hoodie and not a zip up hoodie. JC Marty, well, okay. So where is Abby's phone? According to Abby's family, Abby did not have a phone. There has been a lot of speculation that Abby did have a phone that was given to her by other friends in order for her to be able to talk to her boyfriend. That has never been proven, but it has been talked about for many years. So the only one that is concrete we know had a phone is Libby. And Libby's phone was found either under Abby or under Libby, depending on which report you read. Hi, Bushy. What did they find in RA's shed? Well, I w when we do RA, we're going to go through. I'm going to show you everything that they found and they took from his house, from the evidence log. Um, from rem my memory, they they searched the shed, but they actually dug two holes around the shed, which is when people were speculating that they were looking, they were like digging up his cats. And that was never, I don't think that was ever proven, but... Yeah, maybe he kept some of the clothing as a weird souvenir, which is what they talk about in that one warrant. Okay, so I just want to I want to go through I want to go through the sweatshirt because I I don't want to just assume. I want to see what you guys say. I just got to go back to it. Okay. Da, 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 da. Um Okay, so they're talking about the pink shirt and how the pink shirt has no dirt on it. So that's a big deal. And and in trying to imagine this and like reenact it and like in a reenactment, you have to think if live if Abby's shirt isn't wet or dirty, it's not damp, there's no dirt. What they're trying to say essentially is that one person had to hold up her body in order to manipulate all these clothes back onto her. And that after the shirt's put on, they still have to hold her up while getting the other items of clothing, specifically the sweatshirt, because if they had laid her down, then she would have um, gotten dirty or have been damp like the other, like Libby was. Libby was, it was damp and dirty underneath her. Hi, S. Hockett. Hi, Bella. I don't know if I said hi to you. I'm like, I lost my mouse. It's on the wrong screen. It's on the wrong screen. So it, so it is likely that once the murderer redressed Abby in her pink shirt, that the pink shirt never touched the damp, dirty ground as there was no dirt on that shirt whatsoever. Unlike the wet dirt that was found under Libby's backside and the wet dirt also found on the sweatshirt Abby was ultimately dressed in. This would mean that once the man redressed Abby in the pink shirt, 
that he would have likely held up the upper portion of Abby's body with one hand while grabbing the sweatshirt with the other before placing the sweatshirt on Abby. In order to put the sweatshirt on Abby, once he was able to locate Libby's sweatshirt, then this man, acting alone, likely positioned at least one of Abby's arms above her head as to make it easier for this man to put Libby's sweatshirt onto Abby's body. Once he positioned Abby's arms above her head, this man, acting alone, then would have to take the opening of the sweatshirt near the outstretched arms or arms of Abby. Once he positioned Libby's sweatshirt near Abby's arms, this man acting alone would have had to maneuver the left hand and arm in order to move it into the bottom opening of the sweatshirt. Once he stuffed the left hand and arm into the sweatshirt, this man acting alone would have had to position the right arm into the bottom opening of the sweatshirt. Once both arms had been placed into the entrance of the opening of Libby's sweatshirt, then this man acting alone would have had to have used his dexterity to pull the sweatshirt down towards Abby's head, likely using one of his hands as the other was being used to prop up Abby's body so it wasn't touching the ground. Remember, because there's no dirt on this shirt. There's not, it's not damp and there's no dirt. So it, it, one arm is tied, is, is essentially already being used. So there's only one left. Toward toward Abby's head, likely using one of his hands as the other was being used to prop up Abby's body so that it wasn't touching the ground. Again, pink shirt no, shows no dirt. Once this man acting alone started pulling the sweatshirt down towards Abby's head, he would also have to make sure that Abby's left arm and left hand were also being pulled inside the sweatshirt's left armhole toward the hole at the end of the sweatshirt's left sleeve. Once this man acting alone started pulling the sweatshirt down towards Abby's head, he would also have to make sure that Abby's right arm and right hand also being pulled inside the sweatshirt's right armhole toward the hole at the end of the sweatshirt's right sleeve. Once the man acting alone had successfully guided both the right and left arm into their respective armholes, then this man would have to use his dexterity to lift Abby's body with one hand while using the other to pull the sweatshirt down towards Abby's midsection, making sure that the sweatshirt was pulled over Abby's head. Once this man acting alone had secured the first bra, the second bra, and the pink shirt, and then the sweatshirt onto Abby's dead body, then he would have had to locate Libby's jeans, which were found on Abby. Okay, so I, that's why I said I wanted you guys to hear it. So, like, in my opinion, that's a hoodie. That's a pullover hoodie. That's not a. That's not a zip up. Yeah, bougie. Abby's the smaller. Yes. They did say in the FBI search when that all their clothes were covered according to the warrant obtained by the Murder Sheet podcast. Okay, so I have Ron Logan's warrant. We're going to go through it. And in, in the court records, it is stated that a sock and underwear are missing. So this has always been a question for me, Bushi, is how in the world... Are none of these clothes, nobody ever talks about them being wet in any way, shape, or form. There's no way they walk through that creek and they're not wet. And even the, the witness who supposedly sees Richard Allen or Bridge Guy, whomever they see afterward, they don't say that they see a wet person. It does feel different, yeah. I've got the photo of the pic Libby took. The sweat jacket is unzipped three quarters of the way. Got the photo. Hold on. I've got a, a, the photo of the pic Libby took. The sweat jacket is unzipped three quarters of the way. The one that Libby was wearing? Or the one that Abby was wearing? Is that the one that I just showed? This one? I think defense elaborated on this part a little too much. Yeah, it makes it super confusing. We all get that it would be hard to redress a dead body. One arm, other arm, one leg, other leg. We get it. Not an easy task in a hurry. Right. So, yeah, this was one of the things that I'm, I'm questioning. 
because that was the original statement was that she was wearing gray sweatpants with lettering. So where did the jeans come from? Are, or are they just typoing the word jeans and they mean pants? I don't know. Hi, Dolly Bear. They said that where they would have crossed it should have been approximately three and a half feet deep. Otherwise, then they would have had to have gone down and over and then back. So I don't know. I've never been there so to be able to say firsthand. Yes, that one. Yeah. So, yeah, so she's got a zip up. But my thought is that that sweatshirt then is Libby's sweatshirt because it sounds like it's a pullover hoodie to me. No, Bushi, there is not. There is not enough time for him to... Uh, no, he would not have been able to be dry. No, not at all. It wouldn't have... It shouldn't have dried because it wasn't hot. I don't... Stephanie, me either. I mean, not just the undressing of the girls, but then like redressing Abby in a weird way. I think that the only thing is, is I think that they would know if if, if it, both bras were Abby's. I think they would know that. And I don't think that both the investigators and the defense would be stating that they believe she was. Why would she be naked then? And here's the thing is there's the missing pair of underwear. If those are Libby's underwear that are in the creek, let's just say, and they, remember they say they found underwear, then are the missing underwear abby's and then, and then they know that they she had to have gotten undressed because her underwear are what is missing you know what i'm saying <laughs> i know ruby i'm like end of the day i'm like freedom no i have not seen that at all isn't that interesting bushy like what was up with the hair Well, Shane, uh, you know, like they they say that sometimes stabbing or using a knife in a type of crime like this is it, it, it could be sexual in nature and not necessarily because there's actually anything sexual that's done there. But they that the knife is used as the, the, the sexual instrument that drives the brain. Like that's like a forensic psychology thing, malicious intent. I don't know if you're still here, but yeah, putting wet clothes on is, would be ridiculous. Um, if they're wrong, why would they need them to cross water? What's a purpose? If they were staged, did some lie about Libby trying to crawl away? Okay, so I actually heard Abby had tried to crawl away, but I don't know if that's even true at this point because they're both found on their backs and it doesn't look like anybody was actually crawling. Um, and the only thing I can think of about why they would lie is it's, it's where the girls were found. Otherwise, they would have had to have been taken off site or, to, or out of that area and then brought back. And I don't think that they, law enforcement doesn't want that to be the case because they were searching. So then if somebody brought them back, then they were searching. And then also if they brought them back in the middle of the night, law enforcement had called off the search until morning. I know a lot of the family members in the and friends and firefighters and stuff did stay um, for the search like throughout the night, but I, I think that would probably not bode well for law enforcement. Oh, is that what it is, Ginger Snaps? Yeah, I, I know. I knew that there was one. I didn't know that that's what it was called. Thank you. That's another good point. Oops, Logan is my son's that Pat. Yes, yes. In my opinion, if it were ritualistic, the nudity would make sense. The redressing part is what baffles me. The whole thing baffles me. Yeah, I mean, I could get like the nudity if you're talking like a you know virgin sacrifice type of ritualistic. Who knows? 
Yeah, they said that was one of the original leaks was that they had crawled, but there's just no way. They, they wouldn't have been found the way that they were then. Yeah, that's that's a thought. It's a thought. I've also thought that about Idaho's case. I don't I don't I don't I don't think so because they have Oh gosh, what interview was that that I watched? There was an interview I was watching earlier and I should have wrote it down. I think it might have been Robert Ives who said it was either him or Holman said something about that and part of the audio it's the girls talking about girl stuff. Let me see. It might have been with Jerry Holman. I don't know. And I, I mean, I'd, have, I'd have to find it again. But he said that part of it was the girls talking about girl stuff and that where the, the guys down the hill is is actually towards the end, but not the end. So that I was questioning then if the girls are talking about girl stuff, that would mean if that's true, that would mean she didn't take the phone out to record the weird guy. Or is that when it supposedly said like, Hey, is there still that weird guy following us? Right here. Um, people have speculated that, but then after being zoomed in and, and so on and so forth, and, and then there was also one that there people talked about that possibly like him being over here, like creeping in the woods. Um, the I believe it's the Patties that have said that no, he was not there. I think Abby's mom said that also. When um, I don't know what part. What did she say also? I see nudity as an embarrassment, which is why if Abby was the target, it would make no sense that she's the one dressed, in my opinion. I don't. I would think that Libby would have probably been. Or it didn't matter. It, it, that's the only other thing is it didn't matter. One was going to be one way. The other one was going to be the other way based on whatever their their need for this crime um, and, and staging it the way they did. And it didn't matter which one was going to be which. That's the only other way. Otherwise, in my opinion, Libby would have been the target. Uh, it's obvious that BG or whomever was already on the south side of the bridge, passed them by as he walked south, then and turned around on them and ordered them down the hill. He didn't run up to them. I have wondered this, too, because in this photo, and this is, you know, one of the things that you know, Gray has done is done like the reenactment and talked about like which ones they everything that they every spot that they were at and what are the little the little trestle things that are on the side. I don't know what those are called anymore, but those like where they were standing and how Libby's actually standing on one while she's taking this picture. And if the, if bridge guy, like how long it would actually take bridge guy to get to where he was actually in that photo. Um, and we have to remember the, the video and the photos, we, they have them zoomed in there. He's actually further back when he's being recorded. than what we see. Yeah, girls talking girl stuff. It was really weird. Oh, is that what you were saying, Shelly? Girls talking girl stuff. Oh, she did. That's interesting. So that's another... That's interesting. Who she? So the DNA thing is an interesting thing to me because then they're saying... At this point in time, during this defense memorandum, that there is no DNA that matches um, Richard Allen from that crime scene. There's no DNA. And they supposedly have that in the depositions, which I'm sure they do. I just, like I, I try to say, is like everything's in context. They can take the chunks that they want from those depositions to put into this memorandum. Two creators just after posting... 
they have received pics of crime scene. Two careers just after posting, they have received pics of the crime scene. What? Are you talking about the tree? Are you talking about that tree? Somebody's been posting this tree image like on every Facebook group that there is with literally no I wasn't even gonna I wasn't gonna post that. I don't know if there's something else. I think they're talking about them about the fabricated F on the tree. Yeah, you can name. Oh, yeah, are you talking about the tree too, Tom Tom? I can show you guys the picture. Um, I don't, I think it's a bunch of hubbub until uh, there's something more to it. You can't even see anything. It's just like, it's kind of silly. Because, I mean, somebody could have just gone out in their own yard and done this, and there's like no proof that it's in the actual area, no proof of anything about it. Um, and to me, if you actually, if you had something real, I don't know why you would want to hide the fact that you had something real and show that you have something real, because to me, that would be like, if I had, if I had if somebody gave me that crime scene photo of an F on the tree, why would I not want you guys to know where it came from? What? Really? Um, I'll show you guys this tree. And let me pull, let me save it. It's, I had it on my phone. Um, and I, I'm telling you, in my opinion, I it, take it as literally a load of crap until anything else comes out because somebody could have gone in their own backyard and done this. Let me save it real quick from. So, but like I said, this person is posting it all over like every Delphi, every Delphi um, Facebook group that I'm in saying this is the tree. Okay, thank you, Shane. Yeah, don't, I hope not. To be honest, I have seen a lot of stuff, like, you know, they have the drone, there was a drone that was being flown over, there was the helicopter footage, there's, I mean, it, but everything gets so pixelated. It's as bad as like looking, trying to figure out what BG actually looks like. So I don't know how they would have, I mean, if it's the actual girls, they should not release them. If it's something else that's not the girls, then I don't, to me, it's not as big of a deal. I, I'm, uh, let me backtrack. To be very honest with you, I have no problem seeing crime scene photos. My issue becomes when they are when they are released like publicly, then what happens with them? So I go back and forth because I don't have any issue looking at them, and I know people are like that kind of sick person is like that, but I don't have any I don't have any issue looking at crime scene photos. I've looked at plenty of them in my life, and I don't they don't I'm not as bothered by them as where I feel like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that's, you know, out there. But I also, I know, I know myself and I know if it was my child, I'd be fucking livid if it was out there. So I try to balance that respect. Um, yeah, this is supposedly the F trait. Once again, this is some random person. I don't even know who they are. I don't even know their name. I mean, I could probably go back and look. But they posted it like in every single Delphi Facebook group I'm in claiming that this is the F trait. There's no validity being posted to prove that it is. So like I said, I don't believe it without anything else. If that's even – but I mean – did somebody just take their own hand and go out there and just make an F on their own tree? Right, Music City, that's exactly where I'm at. So 
So another thing I was looking at when I was doing the Ron Logan stuff was um, there's a lot of people who are out at that crime scene on February 15th. And it's still taped off. But I'm like, if the, if it's true, what Barbara McDonald's source told her that they didn't actually take the sticks and they didn't take the F from the tree, then who's to say that there isn't an image out there of the actual F of the tree? Um, somebody sent them to him anonymously. The ones of the, sh the shoe and stuff, they sent them to him anonymously. He does a whole video on it on his channel, too. He also has it on his, like, a website. The, the image of the tree has nothing attached to it. The image from Gavin Fish, he does have all the metadata from those. There's three photos, and he does have all the metadata from those photos that is posted on that same website. This tree, it was, it's just hubbub that was posted into a, uh, into a Facebook group. That's why I won't take, I don't, I won't take it seriously. If that was the work of an Odinist, I would think they would want that F to be way more obvious. Right. Well, and then also we can't even get an answer on like how long after the crimes was this taken? Was this taken the day they were found? There's persons not answering any question in any group that I've seen. That dude CP said photos do contain the bodies. I pray with everything I have that those are never released by anyone. That dude CP? Who's CP? Oh, Harlot, that was part of the things at the very beginning was that there, the trees had carvings in them. That was a very big thing. At the, like, oh, there was, it had to be ritualistic because there was carvings in the trees. But now in these documents, we're not seeing anything about carvings. We're hearing blood paint letters. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The pick was taken at night with the flash which I find strange. Barbara has told Big Solves that pick is fake of the tree and blood. I, I would tend to believe that myself. Give me one second, you guys. Oh, the channel that Shane, the, oh, that's the Delphi, what is it called? Delphi After Dark? Is that what that was? Okay, let me pull up the Ron Logan. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Where did you go, Ron Logan interviews? Now in the day since police made this tragic discovery, the Delphi community has been coming to crime or coming to terms, I should say, with a painful This reality. one's the 16th. Eyewitness News reporter David McAnally went back to the scene of the crime today where neighbors still don't understand how this could happen to two young girls. Dave? As police continue a very methodical investigation here, going down every road in the search for clues, some folks who live near the crime scene, they fear that their road will never be the same. The crime scene Thursday, a place property owner Ron Logan knows well but never thought he would know for something so tragic. I can't really wrap my emotions around it. It's, it's so mind-boggling. I haven't really caught up. It hasn't caught up with me yet. Up and down the hills, across that bank, now circled with crime tape, his son grew up playing here. Never in your wildest dreams do you think if he comes down here to play, he won't come back home. He and his friends grieve for the victims, Liberty German and Abigail Williams, both 13. That's why we come back. He goes, I want to show you what it looks like. You, you couldn't carry someone up and down these hills. or It's hard to walk by yourself. We've been able to identify almost everybody else has been on that trail. And this, this gentleman has not been identified. And we want to know what he saw, what he might have seen on the trail. Uh, did he see somebody else that maybe some of the others didn't see? The sheriff's department says the trail photos of a man released Wednesday have brought in about 200 tips, and they're checking every one of them, they say. 
Police want to talk to the man because he was on the trail about the same time as the victims. I, I think they feel confident that we're going we're to get this guy or guys. That so that's what I was saying. Like, on, on some of these news, like they're literally down at the crime scene. So, I mean, I, I'm not a video expert to be able to sit here and clear all that up and zoom in. But I'm just thinking, like, if they really didn't collect anything, then... Yeah, the trail cams. Uh, from my understanding, there is no trail cams here. They were talking about putting trail cams in later, but I, there was never trail cams that were. So I heard that too. I heard that they there's trail cams that captured, uh, unless they're at the head of the trail. Okay, so we can go back in like timeline wise when when Libby's dad got there. They say that he's on video at like a trail cam, but he's at like the split in the trail where he talks to um, the, the guy known as flannel shirt guy. And he asks him like, Hey, have you seen any, did you see like two young girls? And the guy's like, no, I saw a couple, you know, make it out or whatever. And then supposedly there's something on trail cams with that. Um, Wick, no, um, Libby was 14. Abby was 13 because he was on the trail about the same time as the victims. I, I think they feel confident that we're gonna, we're gonna get this guy or guys that were involved in this. And, uh, and I think they're, they're feeling confident that it's gonna happen sooner than later. Back at the crime scene, hoping for answers. Um, that's the Liebert, and that one, those were, saying, they did not have theirs on, publicly, right? Are you talking about the mirrors? They'll be very vigilant now, the mirrors? from here on out. Rockaways, maybe it was the mirrors. I haven't looked into that for a while, so I may be getting the name wrong. But I think it might have been the Mears trail camp that we're off. Hey, what? Heard it in the news a few seconds ago. Oh, this is absolutely old footage. Yeah, we're going... Everything we're kind of doing right now is going back in time. That's why, like, I put on there, like, like a look back at it. Yeah, because this is none of... This isn't new. Yeah, he passed away a couple of years ago. 2021 or beginning of 2020 i'd have to look that up again yeah hey trina deb you're not the only one i know a lot of people think that play the one where logan is asked to say down the hill that's where i'm going to next and see if I have the full thing or if I just have the, the short. A show. shocking new twist in the hunt for the killer of those two Indiana, Indiana teenagers, teenagers five years ago. It centers on this man, Ron Logan, who owned the property where the bodies of Abby Williams and Libby German were found. An FBI search warrant has just been released, revealing they searched Logan's home. Logan has been the focus of attention from day one. Inside Edition Stephen Fabian interviewed him in 2017. You just cannot believe this terrible thing that happened to the community and the families actually happened here on my property in my backyard. He claimed he had an alibi, buying tropical fish 20 miles away. Yeah, I was not home during the, the time that all this was happening. I was in Lafayette, yeah. and I didn't get home till approximately 6.30 in the evening, and then the neighbor stopped to ask for permission to look back here for the girls. Liberty German shot this chilling image of the killer approaching the girls on a hiking trail, and she recorded the killer's voice. What do you hear on there? Nothing that I recognize at all. No one. I, I don't. Uh, I don't recognize the voice at all. Stephen asked Ron Logan to repeat those same chilling words. Listen. Down the hill. The newly revealed search warrant says Ron Logan's voice was not inconsistent with that of the person in the video. And that image of the suspect? The warrant declares Logan's physical build is consistent with the suspect. Logan had his own take. The picture is of such poor quality, it doesn't look like anyone I've ever seen. We spoke to Anya Kane and Kevin Greenlee of the true crime podcast Murder Sheep. They obtained the warrant. I'm not necessarily convinced that ron logan was involved in this some of the uh some of the circumstantial evidence against him is intriguing and should absolutely be looked at logan is now dead reportedly of COVID. he was never charged in the case and it is unclear whether he was ever considered an official suspect okay 
Now I'm going to play one more. So essentially what happens at this point is they are on, they're looking at Ron Logan. They're paying attention to what he's doing, where he was, all the things. And he was already on probation. So he was not allowed to be driving. He, he did not have a driver's license to drive. Um, so you, we're going to get into some of that timeline in just a second. But essentially what ends up happening is they end up arresting him for a probation violation. And he's sentenced to like four years in prison. I think he ends up doing like one and a half to two years. And then he gets put on house arrest at the end. But he had to pay like $500 a month, which he talks about in one of his interviews. Um so when he is released, when he is released, there is a, a couple of ladies who are there and they record a conversation they had with him. Um, so I'm going to play you guys that recorded. Do I have it in here? Yeah, there it is. Okay, well, first first I'll play you this one. This is when the search warrant's happening. This is breaking news from Channel 13. I think these are so loud in some time. It's 1230, and our breaking news today is a development in Delphi. We have Rich Van Wyk, who is live on the scene. This there is from March 17th, so a little over a month later. And what they're looking for. Rich? And Marie, right now, a team of about 15 police officers are searching the home of Ron Logan. Ron Logan owns the property where the Delphi girls, Abby Williams and Libby German, were found murdered four weeks ago. Police say they are acting on leads they received. They are looking for information in their words to determine whether Logan is a suspect or not. Now, they arrested Ron Logan last week on a probation violation. The man in his mid to late 70s has a history of drunk driving and drunk driving convictions. I've spoken with Logan several times since the girls were found. He seems shaken by what happened here. He is friends or acquaintances with one of the girls' family. He has denied any wrongdoing when we've spoken to him before. We've not been able to speak with him today. He's jailed without bond on that probation violation. Uh, police say they have searched about a dozen homes and other properties throughout this investigation, now entering its fifth week as they search for the person or persons who killed Abby and Libby. Uh, and Marie, it's a story we're going to stick on throughout the day. When something happens, we'll let you know. Uh, Rich, just real quickly for perspective, I know you're really familiar with that area. You've been covering this case now for the past month. Tell us the proximity of this property that he owns to the trail and where the girls were found. How large of a property is this and how close is it to the trail? <sighs> The the trail or the bridge where the girls were last, their last known location is less than half a mile from his home or where they were found to that bridge. Getting there, there's a couple of different ways to get there. Uh, you would have to hike through some uh, pretty treacherous land. There's a, kind of a pathway through there, but it's very steep. There's ravines, there's ridge lines, uh, one wrong step and you could fall into that creek. Deer Creek, which, or Buck Creek, that runs through there. Um, uh, driving uh, would require those girls to have walked back down the trail to the road and then perhaps a third of a mile from where the trailhead is, the access to the trail, uh, to where the property is. So it is fairly close proximity, uh, but it's not something that is uh, as easy as walking around the corner. It would be a tough walk. All right, Rich Van Wyk, uh, live on the... Okay, so let me, let me talk to you guys in chat just for, for a hot minute, and then we'll go into the other video. Um, Shelly, do we, I have followed Delphi since it happened. I would say that I paid attention to what was happening at the beginning, but not like I wasn't like diving in or like in Reddit rabbit holes or anything like that. I just was paying attention to like what was going on. When they did the press conference um, in April of 2019, where they switched the sketch, I was like, okay, I'm all in. And then I just dove headfirst into anything I could possibly find that had anything to do with Delphi and almost every rabbit hole that I could think of. Uh, and there's still ones that people will bring up to me today that I'm like, holy shit, I've never even heard that. Or if I have, I, I don't remember it or I never went into that rabbit hole. Um, so I have followed Delphi for a, for a very long time. And somebody else asked, like, is, is there a, like the, you're new to the case and you think there are, are a lot of people 
thinking that RA is not guilty. Um, my standpoint on it is he right now is not guilty until he's proven guilty in a court of law. That's the bottom line of our justice system. So I'm going to stick with that. Now I do make decisions based on, do I think that we have the right person that we're prosecuting? And when they arrested Richard Allen and they came out with the probable cause affidavit, I was like, okay, they've got the guy. They figured it out. They've got the guy. We're not going to have all the info, even though the probable cause affidavit is kind of flimsy. I, I'm a firm believer that we don't have all the evidence until we go to trial. And and not because not because the, the probable cause affidavits don't give us good evidence. It's because there's still not all the evidence is done being tested. So we don't have all the evidence even at a probable cause affidavit. We don't have it until trial. So for this whole time, if you go back and like look at my Delphi playlist, like I'm like, okay, like here we are. This is they've got the guy. They're you know here's what they here's what they have to say, and we're we're headed in the right direction. When this came out, when this memorandum came out, I just kind of it, it kind of stopped me in my tracks, and and I get why people think it's sensationalized, and I can see that part of it even being sensationalized, and I'm very cognizant of the fact that this is a defense document. I, I understand their, what their job is to do, but there are things that have come up in this that make me go back and go, what in the heck are you talking about? The fact that they're saying in depositions in August of 2023, a month and a half ago, that law enforcement is openly saying there's no ties like i said i know they can cherry pick i am probably more on the fence now than i was than i have been since the man was arrested i'm more on the fence now and simply because they the defense has brought up key elements of the crime scene one i want to go with one the crime scene that we've talked about for years that investigators, law enforcement, prosecutors have always tried to kind of keep hidden. And now it comes out that those are potentially accurate. That's that's a big deal to me because I don't understand what, what Richard Allen would have a tie to that. Now, for two, the witness statements. And I know if you guys have listened to me going over that document, I will, I say this so many times. Those witness statements are just beyond. If those are inaccurate statements that Liggett has put into the search warrants and that they're trying to feed the public saying, nope, that we've got the guy because XYZ saw him here and, and ABC saw him here and so on and so forth, and they're saying it's the same person, then why in the heck did they say it wasn't the same person when they released the two sketches? And up until, like we were talking about at the beginning of this live, they're saying there is more than one person. Nick McLeland, the prosecutor, is saying they believe there's other actors involved in this. There's too much, like, I'm unsure of so many things now. I just can't, I cannot say that I, I, I'm sure we're prosecuting the right guy. Do I think he's innocent? I'm not there yet either, though. I'm not there yet. I'm not I, I'm not there to say he's innocent. There's definitely interesting things that ab about him being there. But I'm not, I'm just not sold. I'm not sold that we're prosecuting the right guy. Hi, truth and transparency. In my opinion, if people are thinking, all right, isn't the man on the bridge, they are looking over the most important evidence we have known from almost the beginning of Libby's video. R.A. puts him there at the same time. Not necessarily. That depends on which witness statement or which statement you believe. Because Dan Doolin says that he was there. He actually, there's two different, oh, I should find them. There's two different statements. One says that he was there between the hours of 1.30 and 3.30. Between the hours of 1.30 and 3.30 means I could have left at 
The other part of, that they say that Dan Doolin's statement says is he was there from 1.30 to 3.30. That's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. Being there during, I could leave any time in, in the mix of all of that. Being there from 1.30 to 3.30, now this is all Dan Doolin. So, but Dan Doolin's like, oh my gosh, I told, I record everything. I don't understand where my recording is. Well, how do you not know where the hell your recording is of this guy? And if, if this guy comes forward and he's telling you, I'm, you can see him. I didn't have to tell you. He's a white male, middle-aged, telling you he's wearing the same clothes. They release the pictures. What the, the the first picture, the first still pictures from that video were released. What the fifteenth or the sixteenth? They didn't release the video yet, but they released the still images. Where's Dan Doolin saying, "Hey, I just talked to this guy yesterday." That guy, that guy right there. I just talked to him. Where the hell is he at saying that? That I don't get that. Six and a half years or five and a half years before he's arrested, Dan Doolin never comes forward and says, hey, I talked to this guy. <laughs> what? So that's a problem for me. So the only statement that's actually done is when they pull Richard Allen in in October and they're like, hey, when were you at um, – and when were you at the bridge? And then he now says 1230 to 130. And I know a lot of people are like, well, of course, he's guilty. He changes his story. He can't be there at that time. Da, 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 da. Okay, fine. Then tell me why none of these witnesses actually saw his car there. And they're trying to make a purple PT Cruiser turn into a black Ford Focus. That doesn't work. Or they're trying to make what what Betsy says is a, what, a 1965 something or other. Ford Comet, but it's like a Chevy or whatever it was. It was the wrong car, wrong make. Anyway, so that's where I'm at. I am not sold any which way. I think is, if you guys, I know if you're new here, you're going to get to know. Once I get stuck in this spot, I, I have to work myself out of it because I have to figure out the what's what and the who's who. And this is why we're going through all these things is because this is, we, I get stuck in my brain and this is where I'm at. And I can't let it go because now I have so many questions and I've got to go back and see if any of these little pieces can answer those questions for me before I can let it go. So do I think they broke him down to confess? It does happen. May May. I don't know. I, it does happen. It, I mean, it, false confessions are very, they're out there. So I don't know. And I, we don't actually know how he confessed. What did he say? How did he say it? Like, those are things that are important. It's like, I need to see all that evidence that the defense is putting up for this memorandum that they seem to have backed up their shit with a lot. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that, but I still want to see it firsthand. And I want to, and I want to see what the prosecutors are saying, but there's just shit isn't adding up. <laughs> I love your process. I'm hundred percent on board. This, my brain just is, it can't stop. Do I think the state will call Dan Doolin to testify? Um, no, what they would probably do is have it where it would end up being um, the person who found the tip would end up probably testifying so Dan Doolin doesn't have to. That's my opinion of that. Because all they have to do is introduce the tip. They don't actually need the person who gave the tip or who collected the tip initially. They can, we'll just get... We found the tip in September of 2022 or whatever it is. Right. Well, because there wasn't a magic bullet then. Look at his search warrant, truth and transparency. There's no freaking bullet on there. And they had the right to search all of his guns because the dude was on probation and they didn't even have to have a warrant to search any of them. Um, Kelsey rang her then boyfriend at 140. The girls were out of the car at that stage. If you believe the PC, Alan's car was seen arriving at 127 it's a tight timeline does it you know what it does say the direction that it's going i don't know if i've ever actually went and looked at that shane it does say that the direction that the that alan's car is seen on the camera was his car headed to park or was his car headed home does anybody know that because i don't think i've actually looked at that Oh, uh, Brad Holders? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mystic Firefly? Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing in, in part of that memorandum 
is they're talking about the Amber Holder on the Odin report. I'm going back through chats because I was all up in my my feelings for a second. So I'm going back to see what you guys said. The state never accused Alan of lying about leaving at 1.30. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Amanda, you're fine. No worries. The girls was witness that saw him coming in at 126, and he said he saw the girls also. That's a big deal, too. If we're talking about the same group of girls, and we're going to need to be able to confirm that. So that, that puts me back, see, that whole point right there puts me back into Richard Allen actually did get there at the 130 time frame. But we got to make sure they're the same girls. This is, once again, the whole little bits and pieces that I'm like, I need more stuff. You also have a third sketch from Teresa Liebert that has never been put out there. She had, and why don't any of the young teenage girls, the group of three slash four, why, why isn't there a sketch from them? Hi, Danielle. Did Alan own a fanny pack? That's a great question. I don't think they took a fanny pack in the evidence. He was writing. Okay. Hi, Sparkleberry Shine. I love how your brain just goes. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. At least somebody does. You and Z-Dub. Yeah, the magic bullet. We got another magic bullet. Was never fired anyway, so no way to tell exactly which gun it could have even come from. And it, if if what we were told is correct, that bullet wasn't even found for days, supposedly. But we don't know that to be true or not true. Okay, Rockaways, the surveillance video from Hoosier Harvester of the cars going by could be very important. I wonder how solid the vehicle IDs will be. Yeah. It was confirmed. I'm so far behind. I don't even know. I don't, what was confirmed, Ainsley? Hi, Chaka. Hi, this case. I'm totally on the fence today. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Ask me in six months when we have more documents and I might have a better idea. One of the sketches. No. the One of the sketches is... Um, the one sketch is... Betsy Blair's, she's the first sketch given, second sketch released. The first sketch released, second sketch actually done, is Sarah Carbaugh, who saw him on uh, 300 North. You have Teresa Liebert, who, hold on. Let me go back. Um, da, 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 da. Let me see if I can figure out where it is. Here you go. So even State Trooper Purdy had to admit that the Teresa Liebert sketch and the photo of Elvis Fields resemble one another. So what's the Teresa Liebert sketch? What's that? We don't have it. We have a Sarah Carbaugh sketch and we have a Betsy Blair sketch. <laughs> TNT. Ah, sniper, there you are. The only tool marks that would be present on the unfired round would be from the extractor and the ejector, which are produced on mass with extremely tight tolerances. So you are in agreement that there would not they would not be able that they would not be able to actually match those quote unquote tool marks. Is that what you think? Hi, Aries Fire. Oh, it was confirmed that the girls saw. But do we know that it's the same girls? Where do I confirm that? I want to confirm that the girls Richard Allen says he sees are the same girls that say they saw Richard Allen. That's all. I, I don't. I'm not saying that it's not. I, I don't. I just want that to. Hi, <laughs> crime sleuthing. I bet the Harvester camera video is so grainy that you can't tell the make and the model of the vehicle. You think it's going to make like a PT Cruiser look like a Ford Focus? Their case is a mess. The exter who's the exterminator? 
What else is what else? What does he? What else does he go by? Like what's like the? I too have a blue car jacket. And well, one of the witnesses said that the person was wearing a tan jacket. The other witness says it was a black or blue, and it was a windbreaker, not a Carhartt jacket. No, malicious intent, you smart ass. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, does does it have another name, like, like flannel shirt guy? You know what I mean? Well, it's you know, bringing back the hometown. I think so too, Shelly. I think so too. We can we can double check on that though. What about the white car with the paper plate? Yeah. What about the white car with the paper plate? You can't turn that one into the Ford Focus. None of them have the same person that they describe. They're all wearing something different. And then the cars that they all say that they saw are all different too. Ruby, that's such a good point. Okay, the Rockways. The exterminator did a long interview with somebody, I think Gray Hughes. He was near the Freedom Bridge parking lot most of the day working for the city. Hmm. <clears throat> Jackie, I believe, yes. He called the tip line. Give me a second. I need to take a drink before I start coughing. Okay. I have a... You guys... Get me all sidetracked and not onto all these other avenues. Hold on one second. Let me pull up. Let's pull up the. I want to pull up. This is like 10 minutes long. Brad Heath. Brad Heath. That name does sound familiar. Let me write that down. What does that sound familiar? Have I heard that? I'll double check it. Okay, sniper. If the round had been fired, the tool marks would have been much more pronounced since the brass would have been hot and soft. Unfired, the extractor and ejector marks would barely be evident. Well, that's probably why the ballistics lady is saying that she's not going to like hit, like she's not going to, what did she say? Gosh, I can't even think of the word that she used now. It's like subjective. That's not the right word. Did she? Maybe it is. Uh, bye, TNT. Thank you for popping in. How do you go forward with such a messed up case, right, Quinny? Um, Crime Sleuthin, I do not believe that that tree is, is real. I mean, I think the tree is real. I shouldn't say the tree isn't real. I don't think that photo has anything to do with Delphi. I, I think it's somebody wanting attention. But... Who knows? Oh, that's true. Yeah, they're related. Yeah, Teresa, Teresa Liebert is related to Sarah Lesenby, which is Tove Lesenby's wife. C. Mathis said he was there as an Odin Tats as well. Oh, jeez. Oh, goodness. Um, I don't think it's real crime sleuths, and that's just me. I was saying earlier, like, I think if, if I had something like that and I was going to show you guys, I would want to be able to tell you, like, a solid place it came from. Like they're not even the person who posted it and is posting it everywhere. Doesn't even like say like, Oh, this was sent to me or this. They're just like arguing, like it's in the documents. Don't you see it? Are you stupid? And I'm like, at people who talk like that, I'm like, I can't have a conversation with you. And I don't trust anything you said because it just seems like all you want to do is fight. Okay. Let me pull this up. <laughs> so like I said, this was after he was already released and back home. Hi. Are you Ron? Hi, Ron. We're from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah. We've been researching the Delphi case. Yeah. I bet you have a lot of people come through here. 
Can you understand that okay? It's kind of muffled because it's like they're recording with not necessarily in the room. It's a tough one. They scared me up too bad that shit. I don't think their bills are What do you think they screwed up? Yeah, they're in this What they do? Concentrated on people who didn't do it. Didn't do anything too much. That's what you think? I know it's what they have. They spent, they're going to pin it on me. Yeah, but they were not But you weren't home that day. They didn't find that. They didn't care. You don't understand. They didn't, didn't. Nobody knew that till later. They didn't care. We need to solve this, and you're in. And you were in the hot seat. I was in the hot seat. And when they found out that it was just too much against them, then another they gave up. But they spent all that time pissing around on a drive without a driver's license and all that shit when they should have been looking for murder. Right. Yeah, you just had. Yeah, they, Wasting all that money, millions of went, dollars. You went to the dump site that day. <laughs> you went to the dump site. What the mafia? I was in the mafia. What was going on? All right. Crazy. Oh, you're getting wet, aren't you? No. I got the faucet problem. Uh oh. <laughs> My pressure tank went out. I just replaced it a little bit ago. I got a brand new blowing faucet. Brand new, hundred and some dollars. It's all plugged up with some crap from the dirty water. Oh. Some of the plumbing in this house is well, there's some beautiful homes along here. Yeah. I need you. Wait. This whole area is beautiful. You from Fort Wayne, huh? Yeah, we walked the trails a little bit. Yeah? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a shame what happened. I'm not surprised. I thought this would happen. What? Not the murders, but when they put up those trails in, in the middle of nowhere, I said, you're going to have all kinds of drug problems and all kinds of crap from this. This will draw every deviant in the world to it. I mean, we we walked it a little bit. I was a little scared, you know, because it was just us two. I'm going to do it long gone. They're not going to do it again. Not here, anyway. Do you think they're from here? Oh, part from somebody in the family for a long time. Did you really? Really? Why did you think that? Because it's too damn close. They can't see the forest from the tree. Right. Looking right at them, but can't. the person who done that could have been on the search team to look for their look for them when they were missing. Right. I mean, they. They had people out here in my woods that night that they were looking for all over that place. Just find them. Now, why did you have to find them there? Yeah, I find that surprising, too. And if that is a crime, with hundreds of people in my woods and walking up down the creek, tromping all over everything, what are you going to find? Right. Destroyed. Stuff. Who found them? Huh? Who found them? The neighbor over here, Pat Brown. She's, it's a she or he? Pat? Yeah, Patrick. Was he on the fire, volunteer fire? No, he's a neighbor. Yeah. For and he found him. Uh -huh. he, he, there was some other woman with him. Uh, supposedly some people on the other side could look on my side of the creek and they saw clothing. So they called out and said, hey, there's some clothing down there. Go check it out. So he went down over the hill and he saw me. So up there, and they're right out in the open. I don't understand why they didn't find them the night before. Why did it take them? Do you think they were there the night before? Why? Well, according to all the law investigators, they were. No one thinks it's the upside. Yeah. Let me call this I have no idea. It's the craziest. Now, can you walk back there or no? Can you get back to where it happened? It's not real easy, no. Oh. No, it's that's why I it's such a not okay, this where the where the bodies were is about eighty feet below where we're standing. And that side over there, it goes down into a big valley and a big Yeah, Deer Creek's way below us here. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah, it's a big drop. Yeah. You know, you, you would have to, 
Okay, so people are asking if that person has a channel. I, I don't think so. I found that clip on a few different channels and had it saved in one of my playlists. Um, so, oh, it's MFW. She lost all of her channels. She streams on... Oh, that's who you guys were talking about is MFW. Okay, that makes sense. I'm like, I don't... I've never heard this person having a channel. Um, so... Yeah, to me, it doesn't sound anything like the audio, but it's so hard because there's only, what, we get three words, and then they add on the fourth word, and 
and people say like oh well he purposely changed like the the like the tone in his voice and the and i don't know if that's necessarily true i don't think the guy should have gone to gone to prison for not for driving without a license but he also did some other shit wrong so it's not like the Ron Logan's not like a good, like a good guy. I mean, I, I don't know if he is a killer per se, but he he had a, he had a criminal background. He was already on probation before any of this even started. So I mean, he's it's not like he's like you know Mister Clean over here. Um, okay, so let's go here. Then you guys are going to see anyone because he said Ellie focused on people who didn't have anything to do with it too much. He didn't say people who had nothing to do with it didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, is that her name? MFW? Was that her name? His arrest was the day after BH's oldest son was initiated into Freemason. Oh, shit. Um, 2018? No, 2017. Oh, his original arrest? Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sold that he is bg i also uh, he's his own worst enemy and, and if he's not and, and most people don't think that he is but there are like i said there are people who are very who very much believe that he is the right guy that brought that it bg is ron logan and you can't change their mind nor do i want to because i mean that that's the that's where they've been you know they've been studying that and looking at it and I can't say that they would be wrong. I just, my opinion is, I don't, I don't think so. But who fucking knows with so much that's, everything is such a freaking mess. All right, we're going to go through his search warrant. Because I didn't realize, I already have you guys on here for two hours. We're going to go through his search warrant. Um, and then we can line out some of the timelines. And you're going to really see why people think this guy is a big fat liar because you got to think this didn't actually come out until 2022 so nobody knew all of the intricacies most people knew that he had lied but not specifically like the times and how he lied and why was he lying is kind of the big question it was always that he lied about driving and had his cousin lie for him and said the cousin was driving him around, but that he was actually at the dump. And then he went to Lafayette and went to, or where did I think, I think Lafayette, maybe that's the other girls. And, um, that he went to like the aquarium store and he wasn't home that day. And as you heard in all of his interviews that he just did right now, you heard him say, I wasn't even here. I wasn't here. I wasn't here. But that's not true. Um, yeah, he has three sons. Yes, yeah, he has three of them. BH does. Okay, so this is the this is an FBI search warrant. So once again, we have to kind of go through who's actually participating in which part of the investigations here. So this is an FBI search warrant. This just goes into the FBI agent that is, um, you know, doing is, is getting this warrant. So Nicole Robertson swears or affirms that she believes and has good cause to believe evidence of a homicide is located in the residence of Ronald Logan, located at his address in Delphi, Indiana, situated in the County of Carroll in said state, which is described as a white two-story single-family dwelling situated in the county of Carroll in said state, including the detached garage, the outbuildings, and the white Ford F-250 states as following. I, Nicole Robinson, am a special agent with the FBI and have been employed as such for 12 years. Prior to my employment as FBI agent, Nicole Robinson was employed as a so, uh, so village, I'm not sure how to say that, 
Illinois police officer for approximately six years. Nicole Robertson, Robertson is assigned to the Maryville resident agency and currently participates in the investigation of all violent crimes. Background. On February 13th, 2017, at approximately 1 p.m., juvenile victims, hereafter referred to as LG and AW, were taken to the Monon High Bridge Trail located in Delphi, Indiana. LG and AW were walking the trail in the area of County Road 300 North and 575 West, near this latitude and longitude. At approximately 2.13, which was the time of the last contact, with LG and AW by cellular device. The victims were were to be picked up by a family member, which we know is um, was Libby's dad. The victims were to be picked up by a family member at 3 p.m. He actually had told them he'd be there between 3 and 3.30. He was going to pick them up on his way home. So he was going to call or text them when um, he was there to pick them up, which he did, and then they didn't respond. So he um, got out. That's when he gets out, goes to the, the break in the trail, asks flannel shirt guy, hey, have you seen anybody? Uh, approximately 530 was the last successful ping. We're going to do a whole thing on ping, on the pings parts of this too. So that's another part. Approximately 530 p.m. was the last successful ping of the cellular phone by AT&T. The victims, LG and AW, were located deceased on February 14, 2017, at approximately 12.17 p.m. at the above-listed latitude and longitude, having been the victims of murder in accordance with Indiana Code. A suspect has been developed of a white male wearing a blue jacket with a heavy physical build, wearing a cap and blue jeans. Where's North Bridgehead? Let me see if I can. So let me pull up my map and so you guys can kind of see this again. Okay, so the trailhead is over here. The old CPS building is here. This is the trailhead. There's a dirt, like it's like dirt trail going this direction. They're dropped off right in this area approximately, um, whereas there's like an opening to go to the trail, and then the, the actual bridge starts over here. So then here's the end of the, the actual end of the bridge. You can see. And they're found over here. So the coordinates are this spot right here. This is what I plugged in. These coordinates right there. Does that kind of make it better so you can kind of see? They're dropped off over here. This is where they're walking. And then they're found over here. Okay, so here's your suspect. Um, the development of this suspect was made by a 43-second video taken on LG's phone. Remember, we just got the access to this, you know, like a year or so, a little over a year ago. Um, but this was actually done pretty quickly after the, the murders. The development of this suspect was made by the 43-second video taken on LG's phone where the suspect follows the victims as they are walking on the Monon High Bridge Trail. Near the end of the video, the suspect speaks to the victims, saying, down the hill. It sounds as though he is directing the victims to leave the trail they were on and enter the wooded area below. No person has come forward and identified himself as the person who met the victims and made the statement in LG's video. Therefore, it is believed that person in LG's video participated, participated, in the killings. Now, to me, that means you, you didn't, you're not the only person, but that's just the way I take that terminology, but that they participated. The other thing is they actually say that the reason they believe that this person is the person who did it is because nobody came forward. Problem is somebody did come forward, not necessarily saying, hey, that's me, but people did come forward. How do we know there's not other tips that we just don't know about? 
Hold on. That information. Let me see. Let me see, Sean, what you said. I missed it. Sorry, I was reading. Ron was dealt a dirt sandwich the last five years of his life. He had nothing to do with the murders of the girls, but I know for a fact the girls were taken directly across the private lane to the creek. And across the creek? Are you, are you, do you believe they were taken across the creek? They actually would have been wet? Short and a little overweight. Yeah, Richard Allen is 5'4". Sorry, you guys, I wasn't looking at chat. I was reading the document. Um, Tom, Tom, how far away is it exactly? Which one, which the end of the bridge to the spot they were found? Yeah, sorry. I, I don't know when you asked that or what I had said when you asked that. And you know the guy was shorter than you? You're 6'2". 6'2", 2'6". It's not consistent with several. They were trained better my opinion to alleviate wrong sound and to find other sequence for better imaging unless the girl did not have her own phone. Okay, so how far is it from... Let me pull my map back up. Where did it go? Well, from here, from here to here, 0 0.09 miles, 573 feet approximately. That one says 400. Oh, shoot. I messed that up. That was my bad. Let me just try to zoom in and see if I can get a better spot. We're going to go with here. Come on. Get out of my way. To there. About 513 feet. Approximately. Okay. Images of the suspect have been broadcast on the news media since February 15th as a person of interest. LG and AW are presumed to have made contact with the unknown male at approximately 2.13 based upon analysis of LG's cell phone, which recorded the video. On February 14th, 2017, at approximately 12.17 p.m., victims LG and AW were found dead with wounds caused by a, which we now know as sharp, uh, a sharp weapon on the property owned by Ronald Logan. A large amount of blood was lost by the victims at the crime scene. Because of the nature of the victim's wounds, it is nearly certain the perpetrator of the crime would have gotten blood on his person clothing. The location of the crime scene is approximately 1,400 feet from Logan's residence. Logan is a 77-year-old male. Logan's physical build is consistent with that of the male suspect videoed by LG on the Monon High Bridge Trail. Logan owns farmland and cares for large farm animals. Logan appears to be in good physical condition. Logan has been interviewed several times. His voice, this is oh, like a little conundrum here. His voice is not inconsistent. It's like a double negative, but it's also saying his voice is, his voice is not inconsistent. So it is also saying his voice is not consistent or being a double negative, does that make it his voice is consistent? His voice is not inconsistent with that of the person in the video. It was also discovered that the blank of one of the victims was missing from the crime scene while the rest of their clothing was recovered. This being underwear?
with while the rest of their clothing was recovered. But the other warrant says that there's a sock as well. So it is also appeared the girls' bodies were moved and staged. Based upon my training and experience, it is common for perpetrators of this type of crime to take a quote unquote souvenir or in some fashion memorialize the crime scene, whether by photos or electronic or digital methods that are now that, that are then downloaded onto computers, storage devices, tablets, phones, iPad devices, or other electronic devices that store digital data for later viewing, scanning, or copying. LG and AW had no visible signs of a struggle or a fight. Yeah, it's not inconsistent, right? See, that's what I'm saying. The enemy of the investigator. Under, yeah, underwear. You think 6-1? They did say, um, a pro, what, 5-8? It changed. They actually changed the height of what of who they were looking for. They said, um, I believe it was 5-8 to 5-10, or it was 5-10 to 6-2. I'd have to go back and pull up my old flyers, but maybe one of you guys remember. Um, but they did change the height. They changed the height on the, uh, on the actual flyers, on the FBI website. <clears throat> During the processing of the crime scene, investigators located unknown fibers and unidentified hairs, which may later be used for comparison of similar fibers or hairs. Logan owns numerous weapons, including handguns and knives, that were observed by LEOs during the execution of a search warrant that took place at his home on March 6, 2017. Logan's home was searched as a result of a probation violation. The search was limited to the discovery of firearms and included only his main residence. This is important to me because we don't have this. We don't have this. They were already in his house because he was on because he was on probation. It, they could, you know, they could go in there and be, they went and searched his house already. But it was limited to the firearms. Now, when did they actually find that bullet? They Art, if they had found that bullet, went in, and it didn't match any of his firearms, they then go back and get another warrant to go search all the other stuff. See what I'm saying? Like, isn't that interesting? Where, like, There's no bullet mention in here, but they already processed at his house. They already went in there looking for firearms. On February 14th, 2017, at approximately 9.20 a.m. This is a big deal. This is a really big deal to, to those who believe that our, that Ron Logan actually has something to do with it. you got to start paying attention to these times. You remember, we've got Libby and Abby being dropped off at approximately 1.48, 1.49 in the afternoon. Um, we've got the Snapchat photo of Abby being posted at 2.07. You've got the video of Bridge Guy, 2.13. Just like pay attention to those times, and then and then you have Derek Libby's dad shows up at like three eleven, three twelve in the afternoon, right around there to pick them up and can't find them. Yeah, they got another one to search. Yeah, the buildings and house houses. So that's my question, Miss K. Is so if they had this bullet already, they already got his firearms. Are they saying that the bullet didn't match his firearms? And if that's the case, then why are they going back and looking for other things? If they're if what they're saying is a key piece of evidence is the bullet, where's it at in this situation? Um, I have never been to the bridge, Sean. I would love to go one day, but it's different now anyway, so that's kind of tough. But I probably would not have walked across it the other way, the way the, the way that it used to be. Um, so on February fourth, at probably nine twenty, Logan contacted his cousin. Remember, fourteenth. Girls have not been found yet. Logan asked his cousin to tell the police that he came to Logan's home between 2 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. on February 13th to pick Logan up. Logan further told his cousin to say that he drove Logan to an aquarium store in Lafayette, Indiana. Logan told his cousin to say they returned home to Logan's house between 5 and 5.30. Now, at 
on February 14th, 2017 at 9 20 AM. Did Ron Logan already know what time the girls would have gone missing because they're obviously searching for them. So maybe he already knows the time that he needs to lie about. Otherwise he's really putting himself in a bad predicament by saying he needs an alibi from two to two thirty when he actually didn't. This is a problem. On February 14, 2017, while requesting consent to search Logan's property, a law enforcement officer advised Logan that law enforcement would not search his home unless evidence led law enforcement to Logan's house. In that meeting, Logan told law enforcement that he did not think evidence would lead them to that, but said, I don't know. To me, that's a fair statement. I wasn't home. I wasn't involved. I have no idea what the hell's been left here in my house, right? But just wait. A receipt from Aquarium World in Lafayette dated February 13th, 2017, with a checkout time of 521 p.m. was found in Logan's home on March 6th during the probation violation search. Logan resides approximately 22 miles from the store. It would take approximately 30 minutes to get to the store from Logan's house. So then it would approximately take 30 minutes to get home. So he would have gotten home at, what, five, checks out at 521, goes straight home, gets home at about 10 till 6. But so if he got, quote unquote, picked up between 2 and 2.30, he gets to the store then between 2.30 and 3 and stays in the store for two, almost two and a half hours. Everybody at the beginning said Ron Logan was lying about his alibi, but the only thing he quote unquote lied about was that his cousin actually picked him up because he didn't want law enforcement to know that he was driving on his suspended license, on his revoked license. So he was only lying to not get in trouble for his probation violation, right? Like that was the big thing. Well, then we come to find out, no, 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 no. The times are not, the times don't even match. They're not even right. So let me just tell you guys, the cousin never drove him. The cousin didn't pick him up. The cousin didn't drop him off. Ron Logan drove himself. Ron Logan drove himself. Which is how he ends up getting in trouble. Hi, Tornado. They have Ron Logan on camera at a bar at the time of the crime. Do we have that? We don't have that. Ron Logan didn't go to a bar that day. Yes, he did. <laughs> Can anybody just point me to a source? Point me to a source that says that he was at the bar. Because I don't, I, I, I vaguely remember something about a bar, but I don't know about that time because his phone is pinging on his property. Yeah, dumb day to lie, serendipity. RL was seen on camera at Lafayette eating pizza and drinking a beer. Thank you, Sean. Can somebody tell, tell, me, tell me where to find that? Then this whole document would not make any sense. Right? I agree. I'm gonna, I'll look into it. Hold on. Let me write it down. If you guys have a source of that, send it to me. Pizza place, drinking a beer. Bar incident happened about a month later. Yeah, okay. We're going to keep going because I don't know how that would even make sense to what they're saying happened here. Okay. So on March 6th, during the interview, Logan said he was picked up by his cousin around 3 p.m. and taken straight to the aquarium store in Lafayette, which is also weird because the cousin said he told him to, that he picked him up between 2 and 2.30. So Ron Logan's lie on top of what he's telling his cousin to lie about, now the stories don't even match to be a good alibi. Um, 
in, in the March 6th interview with Logan, said after he was done at the aquarium store, he was driven straight home. These statements were found to be factually false and intentionally designed designed to deceive Elio. What? Well, of course, because they didn't, he didn't want him knowing that he was driving. I, and But the timing is, is weird. So he's now saying he was picked up around three. Um, so even though, so let's say he did leave around three, even though he wasn't picked up, he drove himself. He gets there at three thirty. So now you're saying he stayed in the store for about two hours, two hours at the aquarium store. On March seventh, the cousin was interviewed and told law enforcement that he was with Logan on Monday, February thirteenth, and that he drove Logan to the aquarium store in Lafayette. But on March 9th, when he was interviewed by another law enforcement regarding the trip to the aquarium he told law enforcement that he lied when he was interviewed on march 7th at logan's request he explained that logan's never asked him to lie um he knows logan has driven his vehicle while on probation and was and is prohibited from doing so his cousin also said that logan did not ask him to lie for logan when logan drove to the transfer station the, basically like the dump earlier in the day on march 12 2017 Cousin explained in an interview to law enforcement that Logan called him on the morning of February 14th and asked him to provide the alibi for Logan's drive to the aquarium in Lafayette. This phone call was made prior to the discovery of LG and AW's deceased bodies. Based on investigators' experience, it is reasonable to believe that the creation of an alibi prior to the discovery of a crime indicates culpability or knowledge of the crime. I agree. Problem is, how do we know when... How do we know when Ron Logan knew what time the girls went missing. So he, there's two, there's two ways to look at this. He either was told because there's a search happening and he knows that they're looking um, because he tells us that the people came and asked him if they could search his property. Like the, the volunteer searchers said, you know, okay, can we search on your property? And he says, yes. He says that happens between six and six thirty, supposedly when he got home from the fish store so does he already know that the girls went missing between 2 and 2.30 or 2, two and 3.30? So he already knows a time that he needs a quote-unquote alibi for? Or, because that would make sense going along with what he tells his cousin. Or does he know something about the crime and that's why he is now creating an alibi? We don't know when he knew. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like if he already knew that they were going to be asking about this time, he needs to have a cover story for why he's driving with no license. I don't know. That's a, that's a bit, that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, was made prior to the discovery of the deceased bodies based on investigators experience. Okay. We read that the cousin said he thought the photograph of the mail that was released by the media of the man on the bridge. This is his cousin that he had live for him. That looked like Logan. Law enforcement learned that Logan had driven on February 13, 2017 to the transfer station in Delphi, Indiana to drop off trash. The video from the transfer station shows Logan driving his white Ford pickup truck between 1127 and 1132. That's actually incorrect. And the, it, the camera was off by 26 minutes, which actually put Logan at the transfer station from 1153 to 1158. Well, he doesn't need to make up an alibi for that because there's nothing happening. So he doesn't need his cousin to lie for him then. Logan did not ask cousin to provide an alibi for his drive to the transfer station. Logan only asked cousin to provide an alibi for a trip that would have occurred at the time of the apparent abduction of LG and AW. <clears throat> On March 8th, Blank was interviewed by law enforcement. Blank met Logan about seven or eight years ago. Blank was in a personal relationship with Logan for a couple of months and would stay with him in his home on the weekends. Blank left Logan after he became physically abusive. During her interview, Blank explained that Logan continued to stalk and harass Blank after their breakup. During their relationship, Logan had dragged Blank out of her car by her hair. Blank still fears Logan. Blank has had not had contact with Logan in approximately two years. Blank told interviewers that Logan had told her in the past that he would kill her and no one would find her body. During her March 8th, 2017 interview, Blank said she knew Logan carried a gun everywhere he went. Blank knew that Logan would carry a gun in a fanny pack. 
Blank described Logan's fanny pack as one made out of nicer material. During her March 8th interview, Blank told Elio when she first saw the photograph of the man on the bridge, she thought the police were looking for Logan because she thought the photograph was Logan. Blank did not intentionally realize, or, or Blank did not initially realize that the photograph was that of the suspect. A call placed using Logan's cell phone produced cell tower data that shows Logan's cell phone appears to be in or around his property on February 13th at 2.09 p.m. Although his exact location cannot be confirmed, the tower data shows that Logan's cell phone was in Delphi, the area of the Monon High Bridge Trail. Well, he lived in that area, so that makes sense. He also says that he didn't leave to go to the aquarium until 3 o'clock. You mean a fanny pack like BG's wearing? Yeah, it's very similar. Who hasn't told an ex that? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to kill you and nobody's going to find your body. Well, he didn't really follow through with that because if he was the perpetrator... He just left them sit there right on his own property. Yep. Could have just been like, yeah, I was in the house. I had no idea. I mean, he's that he's got a lot of land there. There's other people that are in the area that didn't realize anything was going on. Um, I don't believe they ever did like geofencing tornado. I think this is like old school uh, track the cell phone. Why crime sleuth then? I've never heard that. I've never heard that he confessed to a cellmate. I don't know how I feel about prison snitches anyway. Hi, Lucia. I don't, I've not heard, ever heard that. I, I remember something about a bar, but I don't even remember if it was this case or not. I just need to, if somebody could give me a source on the bar stuff and I'll totally look into it, but. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Was I outside of the residence? Approximately. Okay. Well, hold on. I went too far. Okay. An analysis of Logan's cell phone data revealed a text message sent from his phone at 7:56 p.m. on February 13, 2017. Initial exam of this analysis indicates Logan's phone was likely outside of his residence and in the proximity of where LG and AW's bodies were located. Now. Once again, his house is in the area where the bodies are located. So this is this is tough for me without knowing some more exact data. Like I need like some like some uh, Lori Daybell with her brother. I need that kind of data. Well, he he would have even had two hours to stage the crime scene because you have to think the video is at two thirteen. They're saying that the guy who was walking down 300 North, which, okay, if it's Ron Logan, well, that's not the guy. So now we're in a totally different spot. But they're saying everything's done by 3.30, supposedly according to the coroner. So he leaves at the exact same time that things are being done? I don't know. I wish I could go to that, Sean. An analysis of Logan's cell phone data revealed a text message received by his phone at 10.16 p.m. on February 13th. The initial exam of this analysis indicates Logan's phone was likely outside of his residence and in the proximity of where LG and AW's bodies were located. Like, in the proximity, like, tell, I want to know where. I need to know how close. I really do, because otherwise, he's just standing on his front porch. I don't, that's the proximity to me. I want to know, I want to know more data. Logan met with law enforcement on or about February 17th while they were on his property. Logan was physically able to get up and down the hill from his home to the crime scene. So I said, don't discount him because even in the videos we can see 
we can see him going up and down. On March 14, 2017, Logan's former housemate was interviewed. Blank resided with Logan from about September 2016 through December of 2016. Blank was in a sexual relationship with Logan on and off for approximately three years. During the interviews with law enforcement, Blank said when she first learned that A.W. and L.G. were missing and then found dead near Logan's home, her initial thought was that Logan was involved. She said in her interview that she feared Logan and even previously told her baby's father if she ever ended up dead, Logan did it. On March 14th of 2017, Blank explained in her interview that Logan had been violent with her in the past. Blank explained that on July 4th, 2016, while at Logan's home, Logan punched her in the face, knocking her down. She explained that she was drinking, but Logan was completely sober during the incident. Blank also explained that Logan was angry because she disrespected Logan while she was in Logan's home. On February 13th, 2017, LG's family began searching the area of the trail where LG and AW were initially dropped off beginning shortly after 3 p.m. LG's family and other community members joined the search shortly thereafter. Carroll County Sheriff's Office was notified at approximately 5.30 that LG and AW were missing. This is all very consistent. I mean, this is probably the most consistent that you actually get on anything is what, what, time, what time the cops were called, what time Derek showed up there. And what time the videos were. That's like the most consistent information that we can actually say is is probably the most <laughs> that is accurate. Because everything else changes constantly. Um, once the search for LG and AW began, no one reported seeing any person matching the description of the male on the bridge. The FBI has established a database for the collection and organization of tips provided by public in this case. A search of the database has revealed 15 tips in which citizens both known and anonymous attributed the crime to Logan for various reasons. Let's see. Anna Williams spends a lot of time by herself. Diane Erskine told me she does do remodeling. Becky told me she just wants to know the whole truth as to what happened that day. I've never spoke with Becky. Um, I did talk with Anna a couple years ago before she just um, connected her a Facebook account. Wait, Ron Logan fought tooth and nail for them to be able to search? <laughs> right, Serendip, I know. Hence why everybody ends up down the rabbit holes. And this is why I believe if law enforcement had just given some basic information instead of like, oh, we can't tell you anything. Now everything just seems like a freaking lie. They cherry picked this too. Absolutely. Based on the above aforementioned facts, Logan was in the area at the time the crime occurred and that he provided false information about his activities during the crime to law enforcement, has a prior propensity for violence, employed others to assist in deceiving law enforcement, and plotted an alibi for a crime that had not yet been discovered. Information to be searched and things to be seized. Based on the aforementioned facts, I believe there's probable cause to believe that Ronald Logan has committed the crime of murder and evidence of that could be found on Ronald Logan's property. So this FBI agent believes, yes, Ron Logan's the dude. The affiant, re the affiant requires a warrant to search Ron Logan's entire property. Located, blah, 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 described as a white two-story, blah, 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 we already know all that. The truck, the outbuildings, the vehicles, any and all evidence pertaining to a murder, including clothing, Forensic evidence, blood seen and unseen, hair, bodily fluids seen and unseen, fibers, weapons including guns, and cutting instruments, electronic devices used to produce the cellular signals detected by law enforcement in the area of the crime scene, and animal hair samples. Don't go around collecting animal hair samples unless you believe you've got animal hair. Otherwise, you don't need animal hair samples. Computer and computer equipment, digital storage devices, tapes, cassettes, cartridges, streaming tape, commercial software, blah, 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 all the software. Uh, has been used or may be used to store evidence of the crime, research ways to conceal a crime or destroy a crime scene. Records, documents, writings, and correspondence containing information about the crime, crime scene, or any individual involved in the crime. Any and all tablets, phones, iPad devices, and any other electronic devices which may contain digital data. Any and all computer, including but not limited to photographs, videos, documents, emails, and sound files, which may contain evidence of the violations of the criminal statutes listed 
at the beginning of this affidavit. And there you have it. So somebody will tell me if I'm right or wrong about this, but I remember that there was somebody living with Ron Logan at the time who was supposedly friends with Libby's dad. Does anybody remember that? Well, I don't know, Stephen, I don't even know if that's true because there's the whole other section from the FBI task force who believes that it was the, the crew that's in this memorandum. Yeah, it wouldn't take very long for him to get there. Yep, all 15 people who knew Logan and thought BG was Logan were wrong. Well, that you also have another 10 to 15 tips that supposedly came in claiming that it was Brad Holder and his crew of his merry band of misfits. I'm hungry, Sean. Don't bring up cheeseburgers. Okay, so this is this is RL's cellmate. Haas. <laughs> Angels lie. I know. It's like I have these facts in my brain and then I'm like, okay, where where does this come from? Somebody tell me where it belongs. Where am I supposed to file this away? Did you notice the first FBI agent is not mentioned? The first FBI agent? The one that was at the – JC, do you mean the one that was at like the uh, press conference? No, he was staying with Mike and Patty. No, not her dad. So, supposedly, there was a guy living with Ron Logan that was friends with Libby's dad. No? Okay. Does anybody remember that story? Am I just totally pulling that out of nowhere? Law enforcement and their glaring incompetence will go on trial at the same time R.A. does. Yep, him never making it to the courtroom would be in their best interest. No hard questions would be asked. And that's unfortunate because then we don't, we never actually, there will never be justice for Abby and Libby that way. Seeking. But they have the bullet that matches his gun and the girls on the audio saying gun. Do we know that the girls are on the audio saying gun? I mean, I have heard that they say um gun but i've ne we don't hear that ourselves and i've never been able to hear the whole 43 seconds so hold on he was relieved of duty after questioning kelsey seven times Who was relieved of duty? Which I, this one? I hate that StreamYard's like behind. So like when you guys make a comment, I have to like try to figure out what I said and shit if I can remember all those things that I've said. I think one of the FBI three tipped off Kentucky cops on Stevenson murders in November 2022, just after Ari was arrested. Click or Murphy because too scared to go direct after Ferency killed. Huh, that's an interesting thought. Okay, see, the first point, Logan was getting meds, right? He had to pick up meds. He was at a bar, and they harassed Richard Allen. Their setup or influence to agree was Ron Logan, maybe, but he knew, in my opinion. You think Ron Logan knew? I still believe there was a connection to Keegan Klein and these girls' murders, considering he was talking to them, catfishing them, probably talked about them, Talked them into meeting there that day. I see. I don't know if there's a connection between Keegan and the girls. I mean, I, I shouldn't say it like that because obviously there is with the Anthony Shots counts. But I, what I mean is, is there somebody else on that Anthony Shots account that got the girls to go there? 
and not necessarily Keegan Klein himself. Does that make sense? And then, I, I mean, what are the odds? Somebody tell me the odds that they're talking to some weirdo kitty porn guy that they're going to go meet up with. And that same day, they happen to be killed by some other totally different random group of people. Like, that is just, the chances of that is they, is beyond me. Okay, let me see if I can piece this together. Kelsey said he was rude. A lot of people aren't a big fan of Kelsey, though, either. So, I know Richard Allen received a Bible at the prison where he's incarcerated. I think they all do, don't they, Sean? Or they can if they want one. Yes, it has been said the police have 47 seconds of video audio. They said one of the girls can be heard saying gun. They have only released the small clips. See, I've heard that they said gun, and I've only heard 43 seconds of that. And I've also, there's been a lot of speculation if there's more than one video slash audio. But from what we know, we know the 43 seconds, other people say it could be more. I just think that they would be, they would be doing themselves a lot of harm if they say 43 second video slash audio in these court docs. And then the judge is like, uh, you're lying and you have two minutes. Cause I've also heard two minutes. There are no photos of the bullet. It was buried and they returned two days later to supposedly get it. Ellie could have loaded it and ejected after they got it. No picks, no measurements, nothing. And if it comes out that there's no chain of custody on that bullet, they're going to have a real problem keeping that in evidence. At this point, I should question if the girls are actually dead. Well, I think that the people who found them might disagree. There is an incident that happened the week prior to Abby and Lou. Okay, Tornado, I'm not sh which which incident. Eric was talking to KK. How random would it be that they were talking to this catfish? Hey, literally. Literally. That's why I'm like, I, I could, I see a connection, but I'm not necessarily sure it's to Keegan himself. I don't know. If the bullet such good evidence, why no mention of an RL search warrant or any comparison made to any of his firearms? I don't think they'd written it into their story yet. Okay, that's where I'm at with that whole thing. Why is it... You already went in before that search warrant. You went in and already took his firearms. So you have this bullet, supposedly. You don't mention the bullet. You don't mention that, hey, okay, if I have a bullet and I go into Ron Logan's house and I get all of his firearms and I have this bullet that matches the firearm, why would I not use that in my search warrant to say, hey, we found a bullet. It matches the firearms. We now want to go and search the rest of this guy's house. That would be like numero uno in your next search warrant to be able to search everything else. It's known as the ski mask incident. It's Keegan Klein's interrogation, and that's what got them onto the catfishing account. And then they did the search warrant on February 25th. So one thing that was interesting is I was going back and looking through some of these old interviews. There's one where Kelsey's talking about, somebody actually um, asks her about, uh, Libby social media accounts. And there's a, I'm only going to go part of this rabbit hole because there's a whole nother part to the rabbit hole, but I'm only going to go this part. Um, and she says that there, her social media accounts wouldn't even be important anyway, because law enforcement has her phone and she's sure they would have already dug into all of that and made any connections. And this is like in 2018 interview. And I was, <laughs> I was listening to it again, I think yesterday. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> They don't find, they don't figure out Anthony shots for a long time. So then how do we take any of that kind of stuff seriously? Hi, hey, Scott. The bullet doesn't match the gun. The casing is consistent with being ejected from that model gun. Big difference. Yeah, Sniper was in here earlier, and that's essentially what he was saying too. It's like, it. it and I'm not a gun person. So once again, I tell everybody that like, I, I don't know a lot about guns. If I have questions about guns, I either ask normally sniper in chat or I ask my husband because I'm, I don't know all the things. Um, but that makes sense to me. It, what you guys are saying makes sense to me that there's, it's going to end up being very hard to prove that that bullet even came from the gun. If, if they even get the bullet 
into the courtroom as evidence. Hi, Marshall. Yes, KK. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother step, I know. I'm so sorry, Steph's like, wait a minute, what? Because there are people in the chat who have followed this case from day one. There are people in the chat who know all kinds of stuff about the case. And then there's also people in the chat who know somewhat about the case, but don't, you know, they're not, they, we're, they're getting caught up at this point. So, um, <laughs> this is funny to me. I don't even know why I didn't realize this. I didn't say this earlier. You see who the judge is on these words. It's freaking Fouts. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. Freaking Curtis. I 100% on the KK side of things. It's too much to be a coincidence. This whole case is weird. I feel so bad for the families. I wish they had someone that was cut and dry. Guilty. Yeah. I still think in my opinion it was Tony Klein on the Anthony Schatz account. Anthony equals Tony. I think Keegan was only covering for his dad. Very possible. And I still want to know the tie into the whole Wabash River and what he even sent them out there to find and what that had to do with any. I, I want to know what all the, how all that ties into this. ISP didn't let the FBI examine the cartridge because they wanted to create their story. Yep. Bridge guy does also resemble Tony Klein. Yes. He also resembles all the other people from nations and Chadwell and, how are you supposed to believe RL was worried about violating his probation if caught driving when he did it every day, but only time looked for false alibi was precisely the time of the murders. I know. Okay. Really bad day to lie. I think there's something with Tony Klein too. Chris has the best coverage of this case. She's on I, only because we're going back in, we're going back to the beginning. And I think that a lot of other channels are like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Here, here's me like, Nope, I need, I have questions and I need answers. Kelsey said she and her friend communicated with KK also. Erica Libby's friend at Sleepover talked to KK. To, and they know for sure, JC, that it was KK. Forgot about the ski mask. Then they let KK go to monitor, to monitor ring for 2022 takedown. They only asked about shots 12-6-2021. The probation excuse is debunked. He didn't need one for the critical times he asked for. Yep, exactly. BH was staying with Logan. That's a fact. And there's a lot of text and info to back it up from BH himself. I've heard, okay, I was talking about this a couple lives ago. I heard that he, that BH was apparently at RLs that weekend. Um, <clears throat> I could not find any proof of that. Do you know, is there, are there actual texts or info that back it up that are public? Because I would love to see those. Because I have heard that a lot. Yeah, just for funsies. Just so they could follow them around. Serendipity. Coincidence would be massive. The Klein's shots were unrelated. Libby fell out with her friend over Anthony, invited him round after the murders, and found a masked man staring in her window. No tornado, no bullet in RL's warrant. Nope. Logan would have needed an alibi for two different trips, one at noon, the other from about 4 to 6 to the fish store. But he asked for one from 2 to 2.30 or or maybe even 3 at Music City Mom. Okay, yeah, good luck. Good luck getting caught up. Well, that was kind of the whole thing when it, when people talked about KK. And like I said, that's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. Um, and we've been doing this one for about three hours. So we'll have to do that one a different day. But Keegan Klein is a very, that whole case is a very, that it's, it's, it is its old case on its own, but how it combines with this is very intriguing because of the Vegas trip and the, the possibility of what was being sold. And if you go back to looking at Ron Logan's warrant that we just went through and how the FBI is saying it's very common for crimes like this where somebody would want like elect uh, electronic um, memories of it. I don't know how far I think I get really far behind in chat. I think I did.
two sketches, five different descriptions. Bullet means nothing. R.A. put himself there voluntarily with different timeline, another set of suspects, admissions from other people. <laughs> yes, it is. Todd Click said he agreed with defense about who killed the girls. I hope for Alan's sake that his name is Ron Logan. Um, well, he agrees with the defense, and the defense is saying that it's Brad Holder and his merry band of misfits. And he said he agreed. People seem to leave that part out of when they talk about that little interview, though. So prosecution, blah, 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 prosecution says Libby was being catfished by a child predator group and unrelated Abby's boyfriend's father is in a weirdo cult, but they both got murdered by unrelated midget from the CBS. Yes, Stephen. Yes. And then you've got Ron Logan who makes up alibis for God only knows why. And you have um, the, the whole drug angle of the snitches and the drugs. Yeah. It's like pick your poison there. Oh, serendipity. Oh, gosh. Let's get through. Let's get through this part first. Oh, you think so? Well, he shouldn't be there anyway. I don't need they, they don't need they shouldn't even. That's a whole uh, that'll just piss me off because he should not be there anyway. He should be in a jail. Yeah, the Vegas trip, quote unquote. Oh, tornado. See, because everybody was like, oh, no, he's just saying like they're sensationalizing it. And it's like, no, nah, there's more. Let's not stop there. The defense is blaming the deaths on everybody except for Richard Allen. What a surprise. Don't drink their Kool-Aid. I'm going to drink the Kool-Aid part of they, the investigators in the prosecution better have more proof that isn't known yet. Otherwise... Throw the whole thing away. That's where I'm at. Nothing. Nothing happens. And I don't even know how they could prove it at this point. You know what? That's a great point, too, JC. It's like, how do, you, how do you even trust any of this? And then look at, like I said, look at the judges that are signing off on it. You got freaking Diener, who's the one who has to recuse himself on everything because uh you know he's afraid for his life and then you've got a freaking fouts over here who's too busy with his women friends hey johnny well, yeah none of these things were ever reported on the news you get a lot of keegan klein on the news No one got to investigate RA. Well, all they... It's like they knew they were going to arrest him. Once they found that tip, they knew they were going to arrest him. That's how I feel about it. Uh, and I just don't quite get that. It was probably as RA because they did the whole thing while Carter wasn't even there. Well, you can't have Carter there when you're arresting him if he's not the guy because Carter's not going to go for that. You can't do it that way. That's a possibility, Ainsley. That's a possibility. All right, you guys. I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, if you guys are following anything to do with the eight passenger case, I know that ATS news is live covering that right now. I'm probably going to hop over there while I go make dinner. Um, other than that, I, what should we do? Oh God, there's so many other ones I want to do. Um, I think we're going to look at Robert. I think we're going to look at Ives next and some of his statements. And then we'll go through some of the police statements from the police interviews. Um, like Holman's done some interviews. Lesenby's done interviews. Um, Liggett's done interviews. I think we let, let's go through like prosecutor and law enforcement interviews next. Does that work for you guys? I think that's what we should do. 
Oh, did you, Steven? That would be interesting. Yeah, so I think we're going to do that next. I think we'll go through old prosecutor and um, some law enforcement statements, and then that'll give you guys an idea about that. I got to do, I got to finish this part before I can even attempt to do a Keegan Klein thing. And that's simply because there is an entire case that goes along with that. It's not simply what's tied to this. And for backstory purposes, people have to know what that entire case is and why it's important. Um, so that'll have to come, that'll have to come after. Do them all, do it all. So I think that's what we're going to do next. Um, I don't typically do lives on the weekend, so I will probably see you guys um, Monday. If anything pops off that I feel is super important, then I'll pop on this weekend. Other than that, you guys go, enjoy your weekend. Um, stay safe out there. I appreciate each and every, I think you should talk about whether or not RA's car has a sunroof or not. Uh, well, I'm just going to go with that. It does. <laughs> Scotty Skulls, smarty pants. I have no idea. I haven't even looked at his car. Anyway, I thank you guys for being here. As always, thank you for being so kind. And thank you for sharing your opinions in such a polite and non-argumentative manner. Because I know that, like I told you guys a hundred times, like there's so many different beliefs when it comes to a case like this. This is not a new case. There's six and a half years of people doing their own research and bringing their own facts to it. So staying respectful is huge. Um, I know you guys have a thousand other places you could be and you choose to spend your time here listening to me and talking with me and helping me process all of this as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. Go have a good night. I'll see you on the YouTube streets. <laughs>